doctor and you actually can improve your chances of winning a prize drawing if you wrinkle up your entry blank. I'm Holland Cook from survivalspeech.com and I speak from experience. Why this works? If they'll be spinning the drum before drawing, your entry blank will move around more than, and not adhere to, other perfectly flat entry blanks. And if they don't spin the drum and merely reach into a box full of other perfectly flat entry blanks, many of which are sticking together, yours will feel different to the person reaching in. When you win, act surprised. And if you're looking for work, this is a metaphor. For more tips on sticking out in a world where just too much blends into the blah, 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 hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Americans are reeling from Obamacare, higher prices, and an epidemic of policy lapses. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com has you covered. World-class medical and surgery at one of Asia's most modern hospitals. 300 doctors, surgeons, and dentists serving 300,000 patients a year. Fractions of U.S. prices. Friends or family forced to go out of pocket? Avoid bankruptcy. Tell them to run. Run like hell. Hit us up now. We'll show you how. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online at freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. Once again, that's uh, freetalklive.com. With you tonight in the studio, you've got Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. All right, so uh, you also can join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Coming up, a man with a sword, a fake sword, shot to death by police in Utah. Uh, sounds like a terrible story. Mark has the details on that. We'll get into it. Uh, but we're kind of recapping the weekend here. Keenvention happened for the second time ever, and it is sort of the premier fall event for Liberty activists to come and visit New Hampshire. Obviously, there's some great events that happen here, like the Liberty Forum, which is going to be the next event. That's coming up in March, uh, just a few months away, early March, the 3rd through the Four, fifth, seventh, or something like that. It's a few days in very early March, like a Thursday through a Sunday. And Free Talk Live is going to be broadcasting live from the Liberty Forum. You can go to, I believe it's nhlibertyforum.com to learn more about that event. I'm not sure if tickets are available yet. They may actually be. I think they are. They yeah. are. Okay. Well, we should double check that. But that's an awesome event to go to. It's hundreds of people. Uh, coming together in one hotel, and it's just a fantastic hotel event. Keenvention, much smaller, a uh, fraction of the amount of people, which means it's more of an intimate event. We uh, brought something new to the table, a couple new things to the table this year, a few of them, actually. There was the Halloween party that Derek J., you and a few other activists put on as a costume party, a dance party. Yes, that rocked. It was a great time as a fundraiser for Ross Ulbricht. And how did we do on the fundraising for Ross Ulbricht, who is the man who is currently facing probably most of his life in prison for ostensibly or allegedly running the Silk Road underground black marketplace? The uh, Bitcoin that we raised, uh, has, it's not clear because some people donated to freeross.org directly mm-hmm. and others donated through a QR code that our, our bouncer presented as they that's entered. Right. But uh, it's, well, it's clear security that, agent. that's correct. Yeah. And it's clear that we made over $500 for Ross Ulbricht. So it will go towards his legal defense. That's, He's fighting that's cash a very plus important Bitcoin. Case. That's five. correct. Yes. Okay. okay. 
Yeah, so he is fighting a very important case. Uh, he's fighting for his life, number one. But secondly, it's a pretty important case in regards to privacy and the war on drugs and Tor, the anonymizing system on the Internet. And, you know, uh, wow, how far the FBI can go in trying to use hacking uh, tools to reveal information, to bring criminal charges. So we'll continue to update you on the Ross Ulbricht case. And I'm sure you'll be getting in touch with uh, with his folks over at freeross.org to send along the the proceeds from the party if you haven't done so already. Yes. I know they'll uh, they'll appreciate it. So there was that, and and also this year we had a, a, a just a fantastic bonfire where there was something like fifty people uh, that came out to it, which was uh, ama- and also an amazing success. I was uh, sad that I had to be here on the air <laughs> because there was a lot <laughs> going on with uh, with Keenvention. The videos are coming, uh, so if you missed Keenvention in real life, you can go to Keenvention.info. You can right now you can watch all of 2013, all of the curriculum, the onstage speeches and panels. From 2013 are there, and that's hours and hours and hours of uh, great informative footage. And then the panels from this year, I'll I'll probably be releasing them on about a weekly basis. So stay tuned for those. Our toll-free number here tonight is 855-453. There was a man at the Halloween party, Derek J., who had a gun. Yeah, more than one. In some places, that would be a real problem, but not here in New Hampshire. Yeah, I think that's amazing. Uh, While I was on the dance floor... I noticed a man in full camo covered from head to toe with a gas mask over his face uh, and wielding a huge, heavy-looking gun on his back. But he's bouncing, he's dancing, he's having a good time. (laughs) And I'm like, this is strange. So I I boogie on over to him and say, uh, hey, is that thing real? (laughs) He's like nods and, uh, you know, because he can't speak, obviously, through this gas mask. Mm. But uh, yeah, he nods and and I say, all right, cool, (laughs) carry on. And uh, it was just a good time for the rest of the night. Now, I didn't see any incident, but eventually it seems he took it off. It was probably too heavy to carry around for 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 a party, but it's pretty cool that... I now live in a place where a person can exercise his freedom to defend himself and no one freaks out. Like, whole party filled with people, people are drinking, there's lights, loud music. No one freaked out. No one said, oh my God, stop everything. We're going to (laughs) die. It was okay. And uh, no one got hurt. Compared to some places, like where in Utah, Mark, was this man shot by police? It was outside of Salt Lake. um, For having a sword, which wasn't even real? That's right. Well, what, what does real mean when it comes to a sword? Will it slice you in half? In half? Probably not. It was made of metal. Uh huh. That much is true. But, um, could you run th- someone through with it? Yeah, I think you could. Okay, so real-ish. Then. Real-ish. All right. Uh, that's the impression I've got on this stor- sword. I mean, it's not that I've heard... I haven't heard that it was a plastic sword, mm. but you can get all kinds... You can buy a sword for $20. Sure, yeah, Pakistan, made in Pakistan. You whatever. know, some crappy thing that's going to break if you <laughs> attempt to, to stick something with it. Um like you know. those decorative swords? Is that what the, the cheapy ones are? Yeah, yeah. You can like hang them on your wall. I've seen these at stores. Right. If you consider them chintzy decorations for bros. Yeah. I mean, you know, that kind of decor. That's basically where I've seen them. Yeah. Decorations. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, I don't. Yes. Uh, so uh, I don't know what real means when it comes to a sword. Has okay. this thing been hand folded at a forge uh, 1,500 times? No. No, it hasn't. Okay. I would not <laughs> go up against a guy with a sword with one of these swords. Gotcha. So this was a costume sword. This was, it was a, a costume sword. Yeah. Okay. No doubt about it. This is. And uh, was he at a costume party? What are the details here? Where's uh, it coming from? JonathanTurley.org, but you can find this story all over the internet. Hmm. Uh, there's a highly disturbing controversy outside of Salt Lake City where Darian Hunt, 22, was shot six times by police officers who claimed that he charged them with a sword. Hunt was dressed in a Japanese anime costume, so he's a ninja, uh, with a a two-and-a-half-foot steel sword that family insists was nothing more than a prop. An autopsy released this week shows that several of the shots entered in the back of his body. This is important. When you shoot somebody in, um, who's uh, sub- charging you with a sword in the back, they weren't yeah, charging that's, you. That's usually the case. Now, the, wasn't the claim in uh, Ferguson that the dude spun around after being shot or something like that? Or 
the Ferguson case is so much uh, is, is so mired in, yeah. in controversy at this point. I don't even know what's true and what's not. There's been another release of uh, autopsy stuff that says that um, essentially corroborates the police officer's side of the story 100. percent So essentially, in this, in this case though, are you saying it was the who said it was the family said they he got shot in the back or the autopsy? The uh, autopsy says they got shot um, in the back three times. At, oh wow! Uh, several okay. of the shots, excuse me, several of the shots entered in the back of his body. So then the there's family no claims that he had a two and a half foot steel sword that was only a prop. Yeah. Okay. So, so they, then there's no question that according to the autopsy, yes. he was not running towards the police. The shooting occurred on September the 10th after someone called about a man swinging a sword. Hunt was wearing a red shirt, blue pants, similar to an anime character. I guess one of them. The officer said that he fired three shots when Hunt charged at him as the officer got out of his car. When Hunt ran away, the police uh, shot fired four more times. Oh, so there you go. So the claim was that the police shot at him initially. He then turned and ran, mm -hmm. which usually is the time when you stop shooting at someone, right? Where if you're going to de-escalate a situation, uh, you would not want to continue shooting at someone if they are not posing a threat to you. There's more coming up here in moments. We'll uh, dig in further to the story. What do you think? It's Free Talk Live. Hi, folks. Ronnie McMullen here for Life Change Tea. Healthcare is a problem. Whether you're for or against Obamacare, it's a mess. My question is, who do you trust? Do you want to be told what to do, or do you want to make your own decision? My opinion, preventative maintenance. Keeping your colon clean is preventative maintenance. A little exercise, a balanced diet, and drinking Life Change Tea. It tastes great, and it helps with constipation, high cholesterol, liver problems, acid reflux, and much, much more. And with the holiday season upon us, you can get some extra tea for free. Don't wait for Obama. Make your own decision. Order now. Call us at 928-308-0408. That's 928-308-0408. Or you can log on to getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. Ridding yourself of harmful toxins is truly preventative maintenance. Getthetea.com. Free Talk Live. Sometimes you have to do things in emergencies that you don't do in normal times. Like lock up um, Japanese Americans? Look, you don't believe in the internment of the Japanese Americans? Yes, the hell I don't. I don't believe in locking somebody something. up for not doing Let anything wrong. Let me tell you wrong. something. There were Japanese Americans who assisted Japanese soldiers in the Hawaiian Islands at that time. So um, grab all the families and throw them in a concentration camp. That's a great solution, Lou. That's something that should happen in the land of the free, right? See, I don't even like you using the term concentration camp. That's what they were, Lou. Because they were not death camps. They were... They were it doesn't they matter were, if there weren't gas chambers on they the were not premises. Death camps. You see, you're using euphemism. I call them a concentration camp. You're concentrating people all in one location, Lou. I don't, you know, you're giving it an implication that it does not have. <laughs> I think you should go to the uh, Japanese Americans and ask them, Lou. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Do you need access to money? Do you need cash today? If you are receiving a structured settlement due to a lawsuit, or you are receiving pension payments over a long period of time, the Money Settlement Hotline can get you instant funding now. With your cash today, you can pay off credit card debt, pay medical bills, fund your education, or improve your home. You don't need to wait. It's true. If you're receiving a structured settlement or pension payment spread out over time and you want a lump sum amount immediately, then you need to call now. 
They will turn your long-term structured settlement or pension payments into a lump sum larger cash payout, so you'll get all of your money instantly. If you have a structured settlement or pension and you want cash today, call the Money Settlement Hotline right now. 888-785-0616. 888-785-0616. That's 888-785-0616. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. The Seattle Times Associated Press are upset at the FBI for using their names to entrap a suspect with some malware. To They use the Seattle Times to deliver malware uh, to someone, and uh, Seattle Times obviously did not give their permission for that. We'll tell you more about how that happened. Uh, it's a disturbing story. That's on the way. You can also bring up anything you want. We're talking about a man shot to death by Utah police for possession of a costume sword during the Halloween season. Uh, we haven't really covered much Halloween-related news this year on Free Talk Live. It's kind of unusual. Uh, the toll-free number tonight, if you want to share your story or your thoughts, is 855-450-FREE. If somebody is swinging a sword which was the call that was made to the police in this case. If someone is on the streets or in a park or wherever, it wasn't really clear where the call came from, at least that, that I can recall in the story. As, as I recalled, it was on a college campus, but I'd have to on check that to make oh, sure. Oh, boy. Man, that usually doesn't go very well. You remember it was a couple years ago, uh, maybe it's about a year ago, actually, there was a Connecticut college campus where an, a dude had gone to some sort of Halloween party over the weekend and then... The Monday or Tuesday after that, he still had his costume on from that Halloween party because, you know, he's just a dirty college boy. He hadn't taken a shower all weekend. He still had his costume on. and uh, he, he was, was going, partying. Yeah, he was going back to school like that Tuesday or Monday morning. And somebody called in the police on a threat of, oh, you know, somebody's got a sword on campus. And the police literally came in mass, something like 60 officers, SWAT team, Bearcat, cops in camouflage. Whoa. Yeah, you had, you didn't see this? I did not this? hear about this. There's wow. video of it, of like some frat boys hanging out in their college dorm room, just, you know, hanging out. And then uh, some cops bust in and point, hold them at gunpoint. Oh, and, I have seen videos of that, but I didn't realize what the incident was about. It's over a, over a sword like this? Yeah, they forced them out uh, into... I think the dude had a sword in that case, Mark. If yes, I'm recalling seemed, correctly. Yeah, he yeah. did. So they forced them out into the hallway and then forced them down the stairwell. And as they're going down the stairwell, the dude's still recording, which was great. Yeah. Um, and you can see they've got like an, an armed guard at every floor on this in the stairwell, mm -hmm. directing the you know the students to keep going down rather than to get off on one of the other floors. And they had more cops outside and you know cops in camo and olive green. Isn't and it interesting it what crazy. people will do when given orders? You know, these people, I imagine if orders are given and they sound authoritative and the people in charge like look like they know what they're doing, I don't even know if guns have anything to do with it. The fact that they've got weapons and, and look scary, I think a lot of it is like that they assume the role of like, you're going to do what I say now. I've come into your house. I'm in your stairway. Now you're listening to me. And you're getting out of here. They certainly would have done it had the men not been pointing guns at them, you know, simply because they have an authoritative demeanor and they're scary and they'll probably hurt you with their hands. But ultimately, I think that the authoritativeness does in a lot of cases come from not just indoctrination, which is certainly a factor, but the fact that there were guns being pointed at them. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty scary thing to encounter. Yeah. So this isn't the first time such a thing has happened. Mark, you're sharing the story. We're going to get back into some more of the details here in a moment. To me, as somebody with a sword, even if he was running at the police, which was the claim, they shot him allegedly after he turned around to run away. That was well, the, the story changes. Um, it, it clearly, it's clear that he wasn't running at the police, and once more evidence was uh, portrayed the police's story changed all right good i want to hear more about that but first let's go to you with your thoughts the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE john is in raleigh listening to talk radio 850 hey john 
Hey, how you doing? Good, I go was, ahead. I uh, was calling to comment on the guy with the sword. Please. Okay, having been a law enforcement officer and a member of uh, Selective Enforcement or SWAT, um, two things that you don't maybe not understand is that if there's more than one officer there and that gentleman charged one of the officers, all of the officers are bound to try to protect that one officer or anybody else's life, and they all would have fired. So that could explain the shots in the back. Yeah, it and could. The other point I wanted to make uh, was that um, – uh, I've lost it now. But, oh, when he was running away, and they said that they shot him in the back. If he's if he got a felon or somebody that's wielding a sword that's fleeing a scene, and he could pose a life um, threat to, to anybody else in the immediate area, they're also bound to use deadly force to stop that immediate mm. threat. Well, I don't know if they're bound to use but, deadly force. It's just something that they could but, do. Like, it's well, legal can, for them to no, use deadly you, force. I can assure you, if that person has deadly force in their hands, you're taught in the academy. And if they're an immediate threat to the public safety. But the man with the sword hadn't threatened anyone. Well, the, we don't know. Uh, like, he's okay. he, at this point, we don't. He was. Here's the, here's the thing, though. He was swinging around. That was the original complaint. When the police shows up, he, or he runs. So, what happens if he runs into a college co ed that's walking down the street and he whacks them? Well, there's all kinds of what if scare stories that you can put forth, but that doesn't justify taking a man's life. I mean, if somebody's got a sword, unless there's someone nearby that person, then he's not a threat to anyone else. And even if this uh, this uh, this guy was a threat to the police officers, why did they have to shoot him in the back? Why not shoot him in the leg? You know, give well, him a center of mass is a lot easier about. easier shot to take than uh, shooting somebody in the leg. This whole um, you know shoot to well, wound. then he wasn't that close to to threaten anyone then. Well, right. here's the point with that. If if, if if you take your partner there and you got to stand across the room and have him run at you as fast as he can, it takes less than like two seconds to get to you. That's the reason you shoot center mass. When somebody is within range of 10, 15 feet of you, they can be on you in less than a, a second, a second oh, and a half. Oh, yeah. No, I, underst I understand there. what you're saying there. I, swords I are deadly. Um, probably more people have been killed by swords than any other implement mm -hmm. in the course of human history. Um, there's no doubt about it. At least sharp metal. Um, I mean, it's it's pretty deadly when you look at its uh, track record. Yeah. But here's the question I have for you as a law enforcement officer. I think that this is this is something that hasn't that I, I just don't get. So there's this meme floating around Facebook that says uh, something to the effect of, uh, in the year 2013, German police officers fight, fired 80 rounds, eight zero rounds. Now you know as well as I do that this can be 80 rounds can be fired in one unarmed set of criminals in a in a car here in the united states right. why do you think that a place the size of say california let's just make it fair um that they fire so many fewer shots than they do here in the united states do you think it's a difference with the type of people that are there or do you think it's a difference with the attitude of law enforcement i think it's a difference with uh if you're looking at overall crime it's a difference with firearm restrictions you look at germany you look at europe in general uh, there's been such restrictions on firearms since way back before World War II that very few people over there have the firearms that we have here. So police officers, they aren't responding to as many deadly force incidents. Even in you look at China and Japan, it's illegal there to walk around with a sword. So Well, yeah, yeah I mean, they, Japan— they, Let alone a firearm. So all the European countries— they don't have the firearms there that we have here that the police officer responded to where they have to use deadly force, and so that would result in more annual shots fired. Yeah, but there's plenty of incidents where the people who've been shot to death by the police didn't have a firearm. I mean, there's a lot of them. It seems like just about every mental health uh, story I read about, you know, the guy— well, we thought he had a weapon or he thought he had a, a knife or whatever. The cops had probably shot more dogs— uh, in the United States, you know, with uh, with more than you know more more than eighty bullets. Well, maybe so, but and you're also when you're talking about the person, you know, being a threat. When you're walking, when you're a police officer and you tell somebody to put their hands up, put their hands down, and they reach into a pocket after you instructed them to put their hands up, put their hands down. When they're reaching in to pull something out, that's a threat. But if they pull out a pistol, you're dead. Well, no, hold on. Well, hold on a second. Wait a second. A police officer can't claim that somebody's th th any more threatening than I can claim. So if a police officer reaches in his pocket, I should be able to take my concealed weapon and shoot him right in the face, right? Like, that would no, be no, fair. No, no. You're talking about a law enforcement officer. That's different than a person on the street. That the oh, police they're super citizens. That's all I wanted to hear. No, no, no. That's all they're I wanted better. to hear, sir. They're better than you, Mark. <laughs> 
guys are crazy. Thanks a lot. You guys, Bye. hey, you guys get special like funerals because you're better, right, John? Police? No, no, no. Oh, sorry. I actually didn't mean to disconnect. I thought he was already gone. Uh, the toll free number is 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Feel free to call back any old time you want, John. Love to hear from uh, the law enforcement perspective. You can take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. By the way, you want to grab some silver and gold? Silver's low, low, low. It's on sale. It seems like the price is going down. Uh, Silver.freetalklive.com can hook you up. There's more coming up. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Majid lives in Nor Devin, Armenia with his wife, kids, and grandkids all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel it any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and, and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Kay Oliver is part of the Tweyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Hey, 
This is Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I want to get more information. We do have other people who want to talk about this uh, story out of Utah with a man shot to death by the police for ostensibly wielding a sword. Mark, you said the police story changes yeah. here. And so I want to get to that before we get some other folks here because I think that sounds like important information that we should know about before we continue this discussion. Sure. Uh, but also, if you care about online privacy, you need to know about Pro XPN. It's a global virtual private network and they encrypt your data which right now your ISP is probably snooping on what you're doing online. They're probably logging all the websites you visit, all of the search terms that you're entering, maybe keep keeping those logs for up to five years. You can stop that from happening by encrypting your data with ProXPN. Uh, so go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. You can download their software there that's available for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, Android devices, and it's free. Plus, if you're a Linux user, setup's a little different for you, but you can get that working pretty easily. Now, when you're ready to upgrade with ProXPN to get the unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world you can access, the ability to privately torrent, and get past regionally blocked websites, then you can upgrade by using our discount code and save big FTL50. That's FTL TL like Free Talk Live and the number 50 gets you 50% off the price of their annual account. That brings the price down to around 5 bucks a month. And that savings lasts for the lifetime of your account. Plus, you can use code FTLBTC and then pay with Bitcoin to get 62% off of that annual account. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL and you get a risk-free 7-day money-back guarantee. So you really have nothing to lose but your privacy. So do something and go and get started with ProXPN right now at ProXPN.com slash FTL. Promo codes, again, are FTL50 or FTLBTC. You'll get a great discount on privacy. That is priceless. If you're on the line you want to talk about this Utah shooting, please hang on. We are going to get you on. But, Mark, just a brief recap. Guy on a college campus, he's... Uh, he happens to be black, I don't know if he's right? on a co college campus. Um, he is black. Okay. He is... I, I thought... The college campus jumped out at me. It's a man with a sword. Man How's with that? a sword somewhere in Utah, outside in, of Salt Lake City. Outside of Salt Lake City. He's got a... Halloween. Yep. Dressed well, up as an anime September character. September 30, he's dressed up, but he's dressed September up. September 30th. Yes. Okay. He's... But, I mean, you got to understand, cosplay is getting more and more common. Okay. Good point. So, the no drugs are found in his system, and a picture taken by a bystander shows Hunt standing there. I see him here, standing, smiling, and talking to the two officers. The prosecutors have acknowledged that the Hunt talked to the officers. Now, remember, this says that they arrived, he charged them, was the first story. Hmm. New story is, yes, yes, he did talk to them, um, and if that's true, they clearly would have gotten a close view of the sword. Now, I don't know if that particularly matters, but okay. So there was a bystander, there was witnesses to this. Because I agree with the, the cop that called that, look, you know, if the guy went after another cop uh, with a with the sword, the um, that, you know, he might get shot in the back by a partner or something like that. I got it. I think that uh, he made a relevant point there. Okay. So going on, the officers identified uh, whatever. It doesn't really matter what their what their names are here. What is striking is that days after the shooting, the officers still had not been interviewed, according to some coverage, and that the account of the police department changed. The delay in interviews raised a past controversy over police moving to protect officers from having to give statements immediately after shootings. So if you if you're gonna get a um, like. A statement. You'd think you'd want that statement relatively quickly after things occurred, but no, no, we don't mm -hmm. want the police union doesn't want that happening. Well, they want to get time to get their story straight. Right. They want everybody to get together. So we just it, that's certainly a possibility. I don't know what the reasoning is, but that's certainly something that could be a um, a result, right? And we discussed the outrageous policies. Of, anyway, they're going on here and, and talking about some other story. The officers say that they asked Hunt to put the sword on the hood of the patrol car, and that he refused, saying, "It's my sword." And they said that he then began to swing the sword at them when they realized, decided to use lethal force to protect themselves and others. Uh-oh. Are, so, are they sure there were no drugs in his system? They're absolutely certain no drugs are in his system. Mm. So, But the problem is we don't have any chest cams. I'd love to have these officers' cams mm. to see what happened here. I'd like to have the audio of what occurred. And this is what I think one of the real problems is in this country. Is um, One thing we saw with the, the officer that just called in, he claimed to be a uh, SWAT officer and all that stuff, is an attitude regarding who the police are and who you are. To me, right. 
police are, shouldn't have any more rights than the average individual. Um, you know, as, as far as this whole officer safety, sovereign immun- immunity or limited um, qualified immunity, qualified There's immunity. different terms. Yeah, different uh, terms. But this immunity from prosecution for their actions, I think, is a real problem. And I think that that's what the result is. Now, he was talking about why uh, peop- why it's dangerous, why Germany fires far fewer shots, their police officers fire far, far, fire far fewer shots than they do here in this, th- this country. You can get a gun in Germany if you want to have a handgun. A person reaching into their belt, if they were going to reach into their belt, which seemed mm-hmm. like a silly thing to do in front of a police officer, um, they could just as easily pull out a gun as one here in the United States. Absolutely. So... To me, what the difference is between officers in the United States and officers in Germany is a respect for life. Officer safety is what we hear constantly about police officers in this country. Now, this is not by this is in the top 10 most dangerous jobs in the United States. Being a farmer is more dangerous than being a police officer. Being a fisherman is more dangerous than being a police officer, a logger. So... Office, certainly people should be safe in their jobs, but when it costs other people their lives, especially for you know uh, somebody who brought a sword to a gunfight, for instance, uh, I, I just don't know. Like In this case, an officer could have said, you're not going to put your sword up on the te- hood, I'm going to shoot you, but it's my sword. Bam! And now I have to believe these officers who I've seen get their story together over and over in news stories. Like the, I don't believe them. I, I just, well, I've come to the conclusion that I, I, I don't, I shouldn't have to. I'm paying their salaries. I don't, I should not have to believe an employee's story. I should be able to get audio and video. And the fact that police unions all over this country stand in the way of that says to me that they're trying to protect criminals. So you said there was someone there, a witness with a camera, took a photo of the man with the sword. Talking to police? He doesn't even look like he has a sword. I mean, I see no sword in the picture. I want to see this picture here in a moment, and I want to know why did this person not record video? But first, let's go to you with your thoughts. David, listening in North Dakota, you're on Free Talk Live. Yes, hey, I just uh, found your show today. I'm enjoying it. But I am a little surprised because I'm uh, fairly liberty-minded as well. But I I don't – I'm not coming off the least – you guys are coming off really as anti-police. Oh, and no, no, that- no, no. I'm I'm in total favor of the police being peace officers where it's their job to stop fights from happening or to, you know, take someone who's dangerous on the roads off of the roads. I want to see the police focusing on crimes that have real victims. Uh, I am anti, uh, ad- you know, aggression. I'm, I'm against it when the police are attacking people who are peaceful, who've not harmed anyone else, when the police are kidnapping folks for having a plant or having a chemical chemical on their on their body or an open container of alcohol or something like that that's when i uh, oppose what the police do what about you david well i'm just thinking i put myself in that police officer's position where let's say i did have a, a gun and uh, i saw a man kind of threatening people at a party with a weapon and i said hey guy i got a gun put your weapon down and if he then starts coming at me saying, yo, you ain't going to threaten me, and he started swinging his gun at me, or excuse me, swing, swinging his sword at me, do then I shoot him. If you've got a person who has actually threatened other human beings, then it would make sense to take a very serious defensive posture with that individual. This man wasn't alleged to have threatened anyone. Someone well, just called uh, the police on him because he had a sword. So here's what my um, – let, let me get my stance on, in on this before we go any further. I believe that a person coming at you with a sword is a person who is making a deadly threat, and that person – you can defend yourself from that person any way you want. I see a picture, however, of a man with his hands down between two police officers who are standing nearly on either side of him, let fewer than six feet away. This man is smiling, and these police officers have their hands to their side. This does not look like a situation where we're talking about an armed standoff in any stri- si- if stretch of the imagination. If this guy was a threat, they would have drawn down on him. And there are witnesses, and at this point, the Utah police and the internal investigations have not talk to those witnesses and what that says to me <laughs> is, fixes that, in, buddy. Is, that, is that the police departments in this country are happy to defend themselves and look when they i first wait a second wait a second this is really important to me because i started doing this show about 12 years ago and i would take the police officer's side every single time ian is that correct 
Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And over the years, the conclusion I've come to after taking the police officer's side every single time was that, look, I'm seeing these videos constantly of police officers standing by while another police officer kicks somebody in the face over and over again. And that's not public service, right? No, I, and I agree. I, I Look, I'm not going to defend police officers who, who get over aggressive, but I do at least understand. I don't justify it. But their adrenaline is going just like yours and I. No excuse. Hang dog. on, David. If I've we'll got bring adrenaline flowing, I don't get to shoot people in the face. I want to bring if David back. If they've got adrenaline flowing, oh, they're right. professionals. I'm bringing David back. I want to give him a chance to say what he has to say. Coming up. If Americans continue their reckless disregard of the U.S. Constitution, our freedoms and way of life may not continue. Original Intent, Spoiler, and Molan La Bay is a three-movie special that explains what we can do. From the director of Fiat Empire, this trio of movies features Ron Paul, Pat Buchanan, Edwin Vieira, and many others. On sale now at moviepubs.net. This is a mini library you don't want to be without. Lumber Liquidators, America's largest specialty flooring store, is using our buying power to offer great deals in over 230 hardwood and laminate floors just in time for the holidays. Get pre-finished three-quarter inch solid maple for $159 a square foot. That's more than half off other stores. Save up to 43% on our thickest and best laminates. Plus, attach padding at no extra cost and get other incredible flooring deals. Plus, 18 months special financing. Get to your local store. These deals are going on now. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, November 3rd, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,168, silver $15.93, and Bitcoin is trading around $329.26. Today's metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from SovereignMiners.com. Interested in mining Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies? Well, Sovereign Miners has you covered. All purchases come with a free script ISIC miner. Visit SovereignMiners.com to buy your miner today. In the news, leaked phone conversations from the Federal Aviation Administration show that the true purpose for a no-fly zone in Ferguson, Missouri in August was to keep the media out, not for safety, as had been claimed. The Associated Press reports that during one of the phone calls, a manager at the FAA's Kansas City Center said the police did not care if you ran commercial traffic, but they didn't want media in there. Air managers changed policy to allow for some air traffic while grounding news helicopters during the 12-day no-fly zone. The recordings contradict claims made by the St. Louis County Police Department, which stated that restrictions were not about the media, but about safety. Senator Ron Wyden has criticized the CIA for their efforts to redact significant portions of a delayed Senate report on CIA torture. Senator Wyden attacked the agency's demand that all names, including pseudonyms, be redacted from the report. The Senate Intelligence Committee has agreed to strike the real names from the report, but is insisting on using pseudonyms as an alternative. 
The Los Angeles City Council recently instructed the Los Angeles Police Department, the Police Commission, and the City Attorney's Office to create rules for the use of unmanned aerial vehicles or drones in Los Angeles. Earlier this year, the LAPD received two drones, which were purchased using federal grant funds. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud. Detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Jessica Armand would like to thank Liberty Beat listeners for all of their support. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. Did you know you can support the Liberty Beat when shopping on Amazon.com? Well, you can. Just log into your account after clicking our Amazon affiliate link at LibertyBeat.com slash Amazon. That's right. Now you can help the Liberty Beat continue to deliver hard-hitting Liberty news and activist updates just by doing your Amazon shopping after following our link at thelibertybeat.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, November 3rd, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. Researchers with architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth are planning on suing the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the National Institute of Standards and Technology to force the release of nearly 500,000 records related to the attacks of September 11, 2001. The records contain evidence gathered by the agencies and other contractors in the days and weeks following the event. Architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth say the NIST and FEMA have resisted Freedom of Information Act requests and in some cases refuse their obligations to respond. The researchers state that some of the records pertain to the controversial collapse of World Trade Center Building 7, which fell in the evening despite not being hit by a plane. Huntsville, Alabama city officials paid $157,000 to a former FBI agent last year to oversee security improvements, which included monitoring the social media activity of students. AL.com reports that 14 students, 12 of which were African-American, were expelled due to the spying. Madison County Commissioner Bob Harrison said the results indicate that the online snooping targeted black children. School board member Lori McCauley, who is African-American, says that's not true, adding that the expulsions were due to the most serious offenses, such as weapons, drugs, and sex. The so-called SAFE program operates on tips from teachers or students, while security personnel look for images of guns or gang signs on social media sites such as Facebook. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from the Conscious Resistance Network. Videos, news reports, and articles from a spiritual anarchist perspective. Experience the Conscious Resistance at theconsciousresistance.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, November 3rd, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. According to a study released Thursday by the Princeton University Department of Biology, this local two-year-old woodland chipmunk has crafted a far more secure and dependable plan for the future than eight out of 10 Americans. Reporters spoke to citizens to get their view on the study. Clearly this chipmunk is pretty impressive. I mean, he wakes up every morning and says, I need to collect acorns and berries for the winter. He sets goals for himself and he gets it done. He has to make a burrow in a tree stump. That's exactly what he does. He doesn't pause and have a snack and lay around for a few hours. Out of nearly 40 separate interviews with Americans, 33 told reporters they were very impressed by the chipmunk's continued display of foresight, personal responsibility, and pragmatic decision-making when considering his own future. He's preparing for winter, he's building a home, and he's trying to get enough nutrients to make it throughout the rest of the day. All this while being worried about uh, maybe getting eaten by a wolf or an owl or something. Earlier this week, the electricity went off in my home because I forgot to pay my bill. It's the second time this year. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want. The toll-free number is 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. A man has been shot to death by the police in Utah. Some terrible stories coming out of Utah recently with the last week, us discussing Utah on Monday night as well with the crackdown on the dance party. That dancing happened. was forbidden. Right, dancing forbidden. Uh, thankfully, they didn't shoot anyone over dancing in Utah. Uh, but maybe that's just because they didn't get the chance. Uh, maybe they would have felt threatened by someone dancing nearby they, them. Could've... They shot video of people dancing. Well, However, they, they had, really, I thought they had a video camera there to prevent to shoot video in case people were dancing. 
Yeah, that's my understanding. I don't know if anyone danced on the video. I believe that's, people that's left clear. after but the no, police showed no up. No gunfire, fortunately. Yeah, but this goodness. poor young man. Right, he is apparently a fan of uh, Japanese uh, anime and manga and uh, maybe cosplay and was dressing up uh, in the late uh, late September, dressing up allegedly as a favorite character perhaps from one of these you know, uh, anime novels, etc. And uh, the police uh, received calls apparently from people saying that someone was walking down, uh, walking with a samurai sword. Now, walking with a samurai sword doesn't necessarily mean swinging that it around. He was swinging or brandishing that sword. In fact, in a story over at the Guardian at theguardian.com, we're going to get right into your calls here in just a moment. But just a little bit more info here. His attorney says that uh, this is an article that talks about how he was interested in this fantasy cosplay world. His attorney says, Randall Edwards, or the family's attorney, quote, It shows a familiarity, if not a fascination, with that kind of fantasy world. It gives some context and potentially some explanation to why you have this kid walking down the street with a samurai sword on his back. So the attorney's claiming that he was initially walking with the sword on his back. Now, what the witnesses will have to say, I don't know. Uh, that's if, if the witnesses, I don't know that the witnesses would have ever gotten heard if the story didn't go national. And that sadly, I have found over the years is true over and over again. Humans tend to recognize patterns and I'm no different. I want to give police the benefit of the doubt, but I have seen way too many videos where at this point, I don't give them the benefit of the doubt. And it's not the bad guy. It's not the bad cop doing the bad thing. It's the police officers who are standing around the bad guy doing the bad thing or watching or, or it participating once he starts doing it. It happens even before that, in my opinion. And in this case, I think it happens before that when the person who is a busybody, nosy freak says, I'm going to call up the most violent gang in the history of the world to go handle this situation of a man with a, a sword. I'm not sure this is the most violent gang in the history of the world, but they certainly have great weapons yeah, to be able know, to get man. what they want. They're pretty violent. All right. Mm. If you know anything about the history of the police, you know they could kill someone, yep. and she's deciding or he is deciding to call up this gang of thugs with guns to come handle this situation. I hold the person who calls the police mm. more responsible these days than I hold the police. I know how the police are going to act. That's They're like point. rabid dogs. Right. When you pull a fire alarm, you know the firemen are going to show up, but you don't. You know, you know they could also destroy the place in the process of saving. I disagree it. with that completely. Um, every one of these police officers is a human being that ha be, is able to make decisions for themselves every day. They are not a force of nature. They are not a bunch of gorillas with guns. They make the decision. We've been taught over and over: if something bad's going wrong, call the authorities, and that's what people do. They don't know what a person with a sword is going to do, and they've been raised in a world where every single weapon is bad, including an on. Down to a Lego plastic gun that they suspended a kid for in uh, in kindergarten. I want to bring David back on the line here uh, in Grand Forks. He was on with us in the last hour and uh, didn't get a chance, I don't think, to get all your thoughts out. So go ahead, David. Yeah, basically, you know, most police officers, most if not all, not all, excuse me, many if not all, most police officers have never fired their, their gun in a real-life situation. For me, that's a good thing. And so what ends up happening, they're very much like you and me. Even though they've been trained, even though they, they have all that extra training, once you get thrown in a situation, you never know how you're going to react. And we don't have enough information in this case. We don't even know if the guy charged the police officer. We don't really know. That's my complaint, so we are though. To make a, Go ahead. What is the point? That's my complaint. My complaint is we don't have okay. enough information. My complaint is there's yet another dead black guy and that we still don't have video. That in this country where every single freaking person is carrying around a cell phone camera, we can't put cameras and audio on our police officers. We put a little piece of metal on them that says, you have the power and the authority of the citizens of your particular community. Now go out and use it. And we don't check on them. There is no other organization that would be so lackadaisical with its employees. I mean, even uh, Walmart's going to put cameras on its cashiers to make sure they're not cheating. Look, I think I think we are moving towards cameras. How many Maybe people are going to die before that? Going there. Who's stopping the cameras? There always be people. 
There's going the union is. That's right. The bunch of, of police officers that got together, they're stopping the cameras. Why? What do they have to hide? Actually, don't these don't, police officers want know. what's just and law abiding to be done? Yes. Yes, in fact. No, they don't. I, just because the union just because the union is against it doesn't mean doesn't mean most police officers aren't for it. I really believe if there were cameras on police officers that they would actually support them more than not. That may be true There's in some cases. There's only one way to find out. Yeah, I thank you for the call, David. I don't uh, know well, what police officers think. There's no way to find out about it. The only thing I could do is ask the Union of Police Officers, which is an organization that claims to speak for the working police officers. I got nothing else. Well, all, we can also look to the evidence of cities where they have instituted these camera policies. Rialto, where California. Are wearing these body cams, and we see, is there a decline in abuse It's by incredible. Police? It's incredible. So the decline in uses of force have diminished by 66% in Rialto, California, with the institution of cameras, and the de- decline of complaints against police for brutality, 80%, which says to me that there was a percentage of people that were lying when they claimed police brutality. Of course. That's but really finally important. we would know. David from North Dakota said, you never know how you're going to act. And I object to him putting it that way. People act with intention, and they respond to incentives. There are incentives for police to shoot to kill to mm. avoid litigation. Well, there's no disincentive for it. I mean, that's certainly the case. The cop who called earlier said that they're obligated to shoot somebody who is a fleeing felon, which is not a true statement. They can shoot a fleeing felon. It is legal for them to shoot someone, or excuse me, not fleeing felon, but someone who's allegedly committed a felony. If someone has allegedly committed a felony and the police are you know, pursuing that person, they are legally able to shoot that individual. But that doesn't mean they should. That doesn't mean that that's the best choice in any given circumstance. Circumstance, and that doesn't mean that it's right uh, for them to do that. Well, if this guy wielded a sword at a bunch of police, off, at a bunch of armed people, and then was shot three times and then ran away and got shot four times in the back, which is one of the stories that we've been told, uh, the myriad of stories that we've been told uh, from this story, um, I'm fine with them shooting him in the back because if he's willing to wield that sword at armed people, he's willing willing to wield it at unarmed people, and I think that's fine. You kill the guy that um, is trying to kill other people, I'm good with it. But um, if... If I, I shouldn't have to, like at this point, I'm sick and tired of taking people's word at it. If you have an employee or a group of employees that keeps on doing the same thing over and over again, um, that is, you know, the wrong thing to do, and you just have to listen to their story, I, I'm sick of listening to the story. I don't want to hear it anymore. Put cameras on cops. There's no downside. I want to get you uh, more information about this story here, because there is an interesting detail about what he allegedly posted on Facebook that morning. I don't know if you saw that, Mark, uh, but we'll no, get into that. No, I don't that. have that part. Plus, his family is planning to file a lawsuit. Uh, we'll give you that perspective as well. Joe is on the line listening to St. George. George, or uh, to KZNU in St. George, Utah. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, guys, I just wanted to uh, look at it from a different point of view. Um, what, the guy was obviously psychotic. If he's going down to the college, yielding a sword or throwing the sword around, the officers asked him to put it down. He obviously made them think that he was willing to hurt someone. Well, I don't know if that's um, obvious, but hang on, Joe. I'll bring, it, I'll bring it back here in a moment. I don't know if that's obvious because I don't believe the police story. Just because the police Which say one? something doesn't mean that it's true. And yeah, Mark, you'll have to recap how they changed their story here in a little bit. But, but by the way, the police internal investigation found that they uh, the shooting was completely justified. We'll come back with more here in moments. 855, 450, free. You can take control. And nobody alleged he was wielding it at anyone. It's uh, Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. 
For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today is October 29th, 2014. Gold opened at 1223.40. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1268.34, 634.17 for a half ounce, or 317.09 for a quarter ounce. That's 1268.34, 634.17, and 317.09. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explained this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 if you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about whatever's on your mind. Just dial toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. What really happened in the case of Darian Hunt? Yet another mysterious example of uh, somebody being shot to death by the police. Some are saying that he never posed a threat to anyone with his costume sword uh, that he had with him at the end of September Somewhere outside of uh, Salt Lake City, Utah, Saratoga Springs is uh, the place where this went down. Calls came into the police of a, a young man. He's what twenty was twenty two, I think. He's going to stay uh, that way. Young man on the side of the road, apparently, or somewhere, uh, with a sword. With, according to one of the attorneys, meant strapped to his back. Now, allegedly, he removed the sword from its sheath. At some point, uh, and he was asked to do so and brandished it. Oh, uh, re really? Okay. Well, the police officer told him to put it on the hood of the car. Ah, uh, okay. But then he allegedly refused. Also, allegedly swung Saying, the it's sword. It's my sword. Right. Also, allegedly swung the sword at the police, and then at some point shortly thereafter, the police shot at him. He then ran, and the police further shot at him, and at some point connected something like six shots 
and ended the young man's life. Again, no one had claimed that he had actually threatened anyone until the police claimed that he threatened them. So no person, no individual besides the officers in question had claimed to have been threatened by this man. Uh, your thoughts are welcome. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. ISIS crisis or more hype? Antiwar.com has the answers and the facts. They have the readership. But what antiwar.com doesn't have is a pot of gold. The war machine has the magic of the Federal Reserve's printing press and the mainstream media support. All antiwar.com has is you. Their staff is down to a skeleton crew with minimal pay. They are committed to keep the web, uh, keeping the website online with the best of the worst of all the bad news, but they can't do it for free, and they can't do it without you. They need your donation. So please go to antiwar.com and donate or call them today. They proudly and gladly take Bitcoin. That's antiwar.com slash donate because war is the health of the state. So I want to give you a little bit of information here. This is from the Huffington Post piece about this uh, alleged threatening man with the sword, which the police, by the way, their investigation has claimed this was a justified shooting. However, the shooting has prompted accusations from his family that he was treated differently because of his race and that his actions didn't warrant deadly force. Hunt was black and the two officers are white. The Hunt family plans to file a civil rights and law wrongful lawsuit. According to attorney Bob Sykes, he told reporters Monday that a jury would disagree that the finding uh, that disagree with the police's finding that the shooting was justified. The fatal encounter was triggered by someone calling in a report of a suspicious person walking with a sword in Saratoga Springs, a middle-class city south of Salt Lake City. Police Corporal Ma Matthew Scharhammer and Officer Nicholas Judson spotted Hunt and began having a normal conversation with him, according to the attorney of the family. Hunt said that he wanted a ride to a nearby city, but when they asked him to give up his sword, he refused and his demeanor changed. That's when he swung the three-foot metal sword at them, according to... Uh, excuse me, Bowman. I might have gotten that name wrong. Bowman's the other attorney. That's uh, the, the county attorney. According to the county attorney, this happened so quickly, violently, and without provocation, the officers had to use what was most immediately available to them, which was their firearms. He said the investigation uncovered no trace that race or ethnicity played a role in the incident, and the findings of the investigation were based on interviews with the officers involved and three witnesses, they claim. Bowman said that after he was initially hit by gunfire, Hunt, that's the man who was shot to death, fled and disobeyed orders to drop the sword. Now, the attorney for the family, Bob Sykes, disputed that account, saying it was unlikely that Hunt was aggressive. He says, quote, I think it was a whitewash. I think it's an exaggeration. I think they ignored good, hard evidence to the contrary, unquote. The Hunt family hopes a lawsuit will bring changes in police training, he said. Quote, so many young men and young women are being shot down and killed by police officers improperly using deadly force. He said the sword that Hunt used was de uh, decorative, but the other attorney for the police argued it could have hurt someone. They did show off during their press conference the narrow metal three-foot-long sword, saying that the tip is sharp and the blade, maybe not sharpened to Ginsu standards, is sharp enough to cut. It has not been dulled, they claim. Investigators don't know why Hunt had the sword or swung it at the officers, according to their attorney. And a search warrant released last week showed Hunt had been fired from his job after he didn't come to work, and his mother had told him that he needed to get a job or leave the house by the end of the week. His brother revealed to investigators allegedly that he had been making and using a hallucinogenic drug. Now, they don't say what it is here, but another article claims it was DMT. Interesting. So no. he did have drugs in his system? No, not well, in his system. But It's not something that the police would be able to test for. Right. Now, uh, the family members are claiming, Mark, that he was making and using DMT, and he was also allegedly obsessed with a girl on Facebook, according to the brother, who wasn't interested in him. Now, here's a bizarre detail. The morning of his death, a friend claimed he posted a message on his Facebook saying, quote, I have a sword and I'm going to get shot. Unquote. What? Well, there you go. That's really weird. So what does that mean? Does that change how you see the situation? It changes how I see the situation. I I mean, I look I'm looking at this picture here in this other story and I'm seeing a guy who looks hands are down. 
police officers, hands are down. The police officers are within six feet of him on either side. It doesn't look like for a second anything's going wrong here. But if this guy is suicidal, cops will help you. That's really weird. You know, you mentioned that police are the only ones claiming to have been threatened, not the caller who reported him. So mm-hmm. I'm just wondering if he knew he was going to die or if he if he had this wish, maybe the, the caller like actually felt threatened. So did they did they report that they No, the report was allegedly that there's someone with a sword. That's it. That's so bizarre. It's not uncommon. I, I mean, it's uncommon to have someone no, with a sword, but it's no, not uncommon for someone to snitch on someone with a weapon. No, the around. message ahead of time, because, you know, I had oh, this, yeah. I had painted this picture of what had happened. Like it was this normal kid who was just walking home from maybe some party, a little late, had a sword on his back, the police, <laughs> police shot. They were crazy and wrong. But if he could predict that this was going to happen, I don't know. It's maybe not he predicting. was just unstable. What do you yeah, mean? I, well, I mean, yeah, like he this said is, this was going to happen. Well, yeah, I mean, it's only he can only predict it if he's going to make it happen. Now, I don't uh, know. Maybe this could be the statement could be interpreted in some other fashion. The other thing I want to know is why weren't the people, the witnesses on hand, interviewed? Somebody took this picture of these police officers standing next to this guy. I want to well, know. There were what, witnesses who were allegedly interviewed. They said there were three of them. Not in my story, they weren't. Okay. According to this story, the police investigation included interviewing witnesses who corroborated the police's claims. Two of them uh, uh, corroborated the police's claims about uh, him allegedly swinging the sword at the officers. Darn it. That's really annoying because I would like to live in a world where people can walk around with swords and it's a well, normal yeah, thing. And you do live in a world fine. where people can walk around with swords. Yeah, but not die because of it. Well, this guy didn't die because he was walking around with a sword. This guy died because he wielded it. He's making it worse for the rest of us who want to be peaceful and have cool swords. Well, he doesn't, we don't, he doesn't have to worry about it anymore. All right, toll-free number 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. We'll come back with more here. There's actually a clarification on one of these witnesses. Apparently, they didn't see him swing it, but one said they did. Free Talk Live. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. This winter, next to water and food, you need a safe, storable fuel supply for your preparedness needs. Spare fuel is the answer. Unlike gasoline, spare fuel can be safely stored with your other supplies for many years and works in any gas-powered vehicle or backup generator. With the bitterly cold temperatures predicted for this winter, now is the best time to stock up on spare fuel. So go to GetSpareFuel.com. That's GetSpareFuel.com. GetSpareFuel.com. A harrowing situation on Broad Street came to its conclusion Thursday night as a group of hostages were freed from local comedy club The Laugh Up Lounge after a tense seven-minute stand-up set. Every once in a while, he'd grab his notebook, and I'd think maybe this is it. Maybe he's going to let us go, but he just kept talking. Additionally, The Onion recovered this video footage from the cell phone of one of the many captives. Please, if someone sees this, help us. Please yeah, microman totally going to wang it out. Oh my God. Oh my God. No. Cool. I'm not a religious person, but at one point I said the Lord's Prayer and it actually had a calming effect. Like Jesus was standing next to me and said, "You're going to get through this." I mean, sometimes you're just in the wrong place at the wrong time. You know, uh, don't take life for granted because uh, you just never know when something like this could happen. So. This is the Onion News Network. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me. Mark at freetalklive.com. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Ta uh, dial in toll free here at 855 450 free. You can comment on the man with the sword who is now a dead man. Uh, he was ostensibly walking uh, around in Saratoga Springs, Utah with said sword, also allegedly while uh, dressed up to some extent in a cosplay outfit, some sort of a costume, perhaps. Uh, trying to uh, imitate a manga character, but uh, now we've discovered that he allegedly posted to his Facebook page that morning that I have a sword and I'm going to get shot. Whatever uh, that was, means. Was his update uh, that morning, which is very strange. And uh, so was he intending suicide by cop? Did he leave the house that morning knowing that if he walked around long enough with a sword that he would come into a violent encounter with the police? It's kind of what it sounds like. So, well, we'd love to get your thoughts. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. In uh, New Hampshire, it's legal to walk around with a sword on your back. Now, if you're brandishing the sword, I don't know about that. That could be illegal. I'm not sure what the law is there. I know that brandishing a firearm in most places is, is an illegal thing. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you draw a weapon, you intend to use it. Right. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's illegal, but I don't know exactly You know if, it, if the same rules apply to swords as they do uh, firearms. You're welcome to share your thoughts here at 855-453. But if you're walking with a sword strapped to your back or a sword on your belt or a knife on your belt or whatever, and you're just carrying it around, I don't think that should be something that the police stop to harass you about. What do you think? We'll go to your calls and thoughts here in a moment. And also, I can tell you, or Mark can tell you, how to get a free pound of coffee. Yep, we offer it for free at coffee.freetalklive.com. Go there, sign up for the subscription. You can cancel it at any time. You can get your free pound of delicious, shade-grown, 100% organic and top 1% grade Arabica bean coffee. You, In all likelihood, you drink coffee. You might as well go get a free pound and try out BuzzBox coffee. Now, you can get high-end coffee anywhere. You can go in your town. There's likely a coffee shop that sells it, not the grocery store, not one of those chain things, uh, but... You know, some some local thing that sells it. Or you can go on the internet and get high-end high coffee. What's different about BuzzBox Coffee is that they give us back some of the proceeds that we're able to donate to through uh, Kiva.org to people around the world. We're able to give microloans. And when those loans are paid off, we give them out to other people again. So this keeps on giving people a hand up um, who are in poverty around the world. And... You know, in, in order to be able to enjoy and have human freedom, you have to have a certain level of, uh, uh, you have to stave off poverty. So it's Kiva.org is uh, who we're partnered up with. Just go to coffee.freetalklive.com and sign up today. All right. So, again, our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Let's go to Steve. He's in St. George, Utah, listening to KZNU. Hello, Steve. Hey, uh, um, on this uh, cotton deal, I was, I was going to call in uh, what you've the latest news you've come up with is a little bit deflating for my story. Yeah, me but too. Still, 
you know, I'm I'm really getting weary. I was, I was going to say I just don't have a lot of uh, trust in these in these cops because uh, they'll stand around and watch another guy brutally beat you know one of the cops brutally beat and disarm somebody else. They they'll get into the fight. They'll cover each other's hind end, and they you know the a man here just outside of St. George in a small town called Hurricane, well, nearly 10 years ago, was murdered because he what wasn't adequately medicated. He was he had a psych a medical issue where he was he just robed and was running down the street naked and and the cops in order to keep people from seeing his wanker decided that they needed to taser him a number of times and that overdid his heart and he kind of died from that. You know they just they shoot and then shoot first and then ask questions later and yeah. and then this cop that called in he is he was kind of wondering why he, we take the stance of we think of you as the bad guy. <laughs> uh, look around, look at all the, the brutality that's going on in this nation. The, the cops just shoot first, ask questions later. You know, murder a girl in Southern California for uh, being psychotic when the parents specifically asked for medical help, not police murders, mm. to show up and subdue her. You know, I think the, uh, the thing that would, would would fix this, um, yeah, flashbang. There's no shortage of these stories. Yeah, the, no the flashbanged baby is a is a heck of a story. Um, the thing that I think would fix this is cameras and microphones on police officers that stream live to the internet. That way, it's not held by the department. Because what we've seen with dash cams over and over again is the footage gets lost. That this stuff, this audio and video, needs to be streamed to the internet so that people can. View their employees at work. That's, That's a the neat idea. idea. So long as there's internet service where the officer happens to be. Well, I mean, in right. most cases, the cell phone cell phones do this. Time. Sorry, Steve. That's, that's some transparency. It's about time for some transparency. Yeah. They're not gaining more credibility with all their lies. Thank you for your call tonight, Steve. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. So. I would love to talk to Jocelyn Hansen. The, the one picture that we have seen thus far of this situation with the two cops talking to the young man, it says, uh, courtesy Jocelyn Hansen. I presume that is the witness who provided this still photo. Why wasn't she recording video? Was she recording? She must not have been. She must have just grabbed her picture, her camera, and snapped a picture. Sometimes it's hard to switch it over. You know, like it, they're not all these great camera, the cell phones like you have. Mine's crappy, and it does what it wants when you sort of touch the screen. Hmm. Well, I don't know about that. I don't know if that was the reason why there was no video here. I think it's you know a lot of cases. The reason is that people just don't know how to record the police. They're intimidated in a lot of cases by the police. And uh, and that that could have been a total game changer here. Yeah, it seems like that's the case. Not everyone's a citizen journalist ready to grab a camera and start reporting on what's happening around them. It can be uncomfortable. You can draw attention to yourself. Maybe the police wouldn't have liked that. Uh, she could have been uh, in fear for arrest. There are lots of reasons why she might not have recorded. But she would have been safer if she were live streaming, in my opinion. If anything were to happen, at least it's on video and people can see it. Yeah, I think this is so important, and that's one of the reasons why I work with copblock.org. Uh, we've got Keen Cop Block here in the area. Copblock.org is this large, uh, decentralized organization nationwide and beyond that, international even, where individuals uh, will are encouraged to hold the police accountable uh, by means of recording video of the scene. And I remember there was a comment, I don't know if it was you that was making it, Derek J., uh, off the air. We were talking about Keenvention, this Event, uh, event that happened here in Keene, New Hampshire over the weekend. We had the cop block panel for the first time, and we also had cop blocking happen on Friday night. You went out to this, and there was a comment made by somebody that they were just amazed at how people how people were able to get close to the police in Keene. And like in some places, you get within 30 feet of a cop with a video camera, and they start yelling at you and threatening you. But here, the cop blockers were, you know, just a few feet away from police officers when they were interacting with with other people, and and well, they were okay. I, yeah, that's true. But let's point out that during the the great Keen riots of 2014 that just occurred, that it was cop blockers and liberty activists that went out and got video of the people, the rioters that the police are currently using, like mm -hmm. the. Video recorders, this is one of the reasons I don't particularly like the term cop blocker. I get that it's um, it's a fun term that uh, kind of has stuck, but 
the I mean, you guys have been helpful in the forwarding of justice. People were uh, th- th- these rioters were damaging people's property, and the cop blockers helped the police in that circumstance. Sure, that's more of an aside than anything else. What I was referring to is the idea that around here, people are able to get closer to the police, and we have enough activists who have essentially created that possibility because of their relative consistency with recording mm-hmm. the police in Keene. Uh, the police have been recorded here for close to a decade now by, yeah. by activists, and that has an effect, doesn't it, Derek? You host the Cop Block radio show, so you hear about this stuff. It's true, and it's become a lot more personal here in Keene because when you're a regular cop blocker or someone going out filming the police on a regular basis, they learn your first name. Mm-hmm. You learn their name. <laughs> you learn their squad cars and what times they're out, and it becomes uh, just a lot more friendly. They're not feeling threatened by you holding a video camera. They know that... I'm there to protect their safety just as much as my own. Yeah, and it really is a game changer, I think, in the, in that way, and it's an important thing. And and to be able to get close to a situation means you're you're better able to cover what was going on. If you can hear what's happening, even though wherever this lady was, uh, it looks like she's a, a somewhat of a distance away. Jocelyn Hansen, the uh, one of the witnesses who provided the still photo, she looks like she's across the street from them. Um, even if she hadn't been able to hear it, she, had she just gotten video at the very least, we would have a better idea of what happened. It's Free Talk Live. Always record the police. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. If you need to say happy birthday, happy anniversary, thank you, or simply I'm thinking of you, ProFlowers.com is the key. ProFlowers has stunning bouquets, like the best-selling 100 blooms for $19.99. Plus, ProFlowers will include a glass vase for free. Sending someone a wonderful surprise of beautiful flowers sent fresh from the field is easy. Choose the bouquet you like, pick the delivery date, and each order is 100% guaranteed. Plus, all bouquets from Pro Flowers are guaranteed to last at least seven full days. Beautiful, fragrant flowers picked fresh and sent to your loved one for lasting enjoyment. To get this incredible savings and send someone 100 gorgeous blooms with a free vase for $19.99, Go to proflowers.com, click the blue microphone in the top right corner, and enter code PLOW. That's proflowers.com. Click the mic and enter code P-L-O-W. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. FreedomsPhoenix.com, constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy, health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's Freedoms with an S. Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. 
But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free and bring up whatever you want. We're talking about a man shot to death by the police in Utah for allegedly swinging a sword at said officers. The woman who took the one photo that is known to exist of this situation, Ms. Jocelyn Hansen, I did a little bit of digging to see you know, if there was anything more that she had to say about it. She claims that she was there at a gas station across from a nearby bank filling up. She took her phone out, took a photo, one single photo of the scene that was happening across the street, and proceeded to get in her car, and then at that point, she heard gunfire, and by the time she'd turned around, uh, the man was running away. Uh, apparently, she did not see the remainder of the shooting after he had, I guess, ran for a little bit and went and ultimately was shot down on the, uh, the property of the Panda Express somewhere nearby. So she did not uh, continue recording, and uh, it was a... It's unfortunate, man. I mean, that's one of the things about being a cop blocker is that if you see... The police somewhere, and you can, you know, if you're not in the midst of running out to a job interview or something like that, if you can, you stop and you observe that situation uh, with preferably with a video camera out and recording the whole time because it helps keep everybody in the situation accountable. And I think it is true that when the police have had the, uh, the personal body cams installed, that claims against the police have dropped and it, that it turns out that in a lot of cases people have made false claims against the police. That's not un, you know that's not unbelievable too, right? Like we know that the police lie and certainly the police know that some of the people they're dealing with tell lies about them as well. And so if the body cams right, everybody thinks everybody's lying yeah. and body cams would really solve this problem. Yeah. Well, it would help solve the problem. It would make yeah. I feel a little obvious. scalded bringing this story in because um, this is, you know, I had this just another story on just another guy getting shot, and then you came up with more um, more information on it, and I think it's great that we're able to report that. But it's that. not okay. Like, just because the guy might have, look, just because he allegedly posted to Facebook, this was according to a family member, uh, that he had posted to Facebook that morning, I have a sword and I'm going to get shot, just because he posted that doesn't mean that it was okay for the police to escalate the situation like they did. Well, I don't, I don't think, think a person should be shot for possession of a sword, but it sounds like he had more than just possession. It sounds like he had an intention to die. Maybe that's true, but that doesn't mean it's okay for the police to kill him, right? Like, mm. my, my position on this is that the he police was, should use the minimum amount of force to subdue somebody. Don't these cops have a taser on their belts? Don't they have something else? There's one art, One of the articles here said the police had to resort to using their firearms. Really? Don't they have some sort of non-lethal means? I suppose there are some police departments where they've just decided they don't want to spend the money on a non-lethal means of taking somebody down. But if they had a taser on them, why not pull the taser? Why not shoot the guy with the taser as he's brandishing this firearm? That's not the sword, how they rather. act. If you observe the world around you and make basic observations about how the police act... You would see that they could be just as deadly. You could do something like suicide by a cop. In the same way that I hold the pol people who call the police responsible mm -hmm. for killing people when, when the police shoot them. I know Mark and I disagree about this, but I think the, the young man who uh, wanted suicide by a cop, uh, he knows exactly what the police were going to do. They were going to act like rabid dogs. They were going to kill but him over something that's nothing. that doesn't make it okay, right? Like, ideally, if these cops were peace officers— then they should act to de-escalate a situation. Yeah, and it's to, not okay with and, me. And if. to not bring more force than is necessary to take somebody down. 
to to yeah. ideally keep that person alive. Maybe he was having a really dark time in his life and had gone off the deep end for a variety of personal reasons. Right. That doesn't mean he needs to get shot to death. And I know you're not saying that. I know you're not right, saying that. Right. Right. But uh, but I just feel like Mark Mark was apologizing for bringing the story in because that for some reason that one little detail. No, I'm not it. apologizing. I said I feel uh, scalded. But I think we need to talk about things like this too. Well, right. I think this is a fine story either way because I feel like the police again escalated the situation. Just like they mm. escalated the situation with the Pumpkin Fest riots here in Keene, there's no doubt the police escalated that violence. And the same thing happened here. And I, th- I think it was unnecessary. And I know the cops are going to say, well, he was threatening the officers, so they have the right to use. Okay, I get that they have a right to do this by the system, by you know the way the rules are written. But they're, I used to think that they were supposed to use the minimum amount of force. Now, if the cops' arguments are that, well, we don't have a, a taser and all we have are guns— well, then that doesn't make much sense, and they need to really relook at the their weapons policy. Uh, a, a police officer should have multiple tools to which they can turn to handle a situation like this, and most of them do have multiple tools. But and I, again, I don't want to go out on a limb and say one way or the other what Saratoga Springs is. You know, whatever their outfit is for their officers, what do they strap on when they go out for the day? Is it just a gun? Do they have nothing else? I think if there were private police forces competing with each other for customers, there would be a lot more input from people like us to say, yeah. like, oh, what should police be wearing? Or what what do we want our local police to have a net <laughs> to catch people <laughs> with? Or, a big <laughs> butterfly net. <laughs> or what? I mean, you would have freedom of choice in that regard. And I don't think most people know what the police are arming themselves with in their local communities or anywhere else. So share your thoughts here. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Again, the family is planning a lawsuit. There was some There was some other news because, was, again, I was looking for footage. Is there anything that exists? There are stories from mid-September, and you said this was September 30th. Was that like last year, Mark, Was it or was it this year? Because I could have sworn I just saw a, sto- a story from mid-September that was claiming to have information about this. This, um, According to this, uh Late September. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was mid-October. Well, anyway, um, th- there was another one about how the bank that was nearby to this incident may have footage. Now, hmm. there's no follow-up story, so said footage hasn't been released. It's also possible that the bank didn't have footage. The bank would not confirm whether or not their footage caught this action happening. They only confirmed that they were willing to turn over their footage to the police. Now... If there is footage that exists of this, and again, maybe there's not, but if there is footage that exists of this and the police and it backs up the police's story, then you would think the police would have released that footage by now. Um, and so that footage has not been released. And again, that may just mean the footage doesn't have the actual incident on it. But it's possible, at least at some point, that maybe we'll get to see something uh, of, vi- of a video nature of what actually went down here. Because it's tragic. It's It's horrible and... And it shouldn't have happened, um, even if that's what the man wanted. Even if the man wanted to be shot to death by the police that day, uh, they should not have fulfilled his wish, in you my know, opinion. Okay, so a sword is a deadly weapon. Um, I get that police officers should have lots of different choices, but when you're going to draw a weapon uh, on somebody who's running away, who's at this point threatened with threaten some people who have guns with a deadly weapon that person is unhinged allegedly according to the officers and at least one witness but another witness apparently didn't see it happen didn't so see that officers and a witness it's good enough for me so witnesses are notoriously unreliable and police lie so that's not good enough for me well, I, I want cameras and audio as much yeah. as you do Ian but at this point all we have to go on is a witness and Police. Not good enough. Well, I understand it's good enough for me. So you've got a guy who's uh, t- t- used a deadly weapon to threaten some people with a gun who's clearly unhinged, um, has been shot, and is now running away. Is that person likely to shoot somebody else? I think they are. You mean to hack someone else? Uh, excuse yeah, me, hack sword. somebody, stab somebody, whatever they're going to do. Yes, I think that they're likely to do that. I don't have a problem with shooting them. Now, if they had guns with rubber bullets or something like that. I think that would be really awesome. But exactly what are they supposed to carry on these utility belts of theirs? They got pepper spray. They've got... Do uh, they? In many cases, they have pepper spray. They have tasers. They have guns. And now they're going to have the gun. Now they're going to have the gun with the rubber bullets. Um, then That's they're going to have the I'm flashlight. Saying. I mean, they're going to be... Baton. They're going to look like... 
some kind of mech warrior That's here not shortly. That's what I was saying, Mark. I was suggesting they have some sort of non-lethal option. The way these cops but made it sound But not going to go they... far enough. Did you see how close they were to this guy? Originally, the picture shows them sh- standing right next to him. If he pulls out a sword and they're this close to him, then he's an imminent threat to them, yeah. and they can absolutely use a okay, taser. And I was taser you were someone. talking about when they were running away. Yeah, yes, while, I get it. while they're running away, he can't tase somebody. Obviously, but that my my point was not when he was running away after yeah, having okay. been shot the All first right. time, but you know when he pulled the sword, when he became a threat, alleged threat to the officers, he was right there next to them. Ostensibly, so that would have been a perfect time to hit him with uh, with a taser. Fine, um, if uh, or the pepper spray or whatever. Anybody they who would pulls use. A, a sword on an officer has, in my opinion, forfeited any chance they have of drawing breath in the future. It's not that I well, don't. You're just justifying the violence. It's not that I. It's not that I support this. It's not that I don't think there shouldn't be other options. It's not that I don't think that we should try to avoid this in the future. That's what I want to know. Just, Why didn't they use? If they have another option, and maybe they don't. Why didn't they use it? For me, it's always an issue of rights. And as far as I'm concerned, this guy gave up his right to life. Well, I don't think that's necessarily the case. Um, just because you're crazy in a moment and you happen to, you know, brandish a, some sort of a weapon doesn't mean you've given up your right to life. I mean, I think that the police should try to protect life rather than take it from somebody in all instances. But I guess that's a crazy position. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. More coming up here. What do you think? It's Free Talk Live. Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. The event you've been waiting for is here. Lumber Liquidators, third annual fall flooring yard sale. It's your chance to get first quality, full warranty, direct from the mill flooring at unbelievable closeout prices. Like oak laminate for an incredible 19 cents a square foot and pre-finished three-quarter inch solid maple for just $149. Plus beautiful bamboo for 63% less than other stores. Take advantage of our 20 years of savings with 20-month special financing and get even more unheard of flooring deals in our stores. Fall flooring yard sale is Thursday through Monday only. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Lil Drums. Every bit as fun as a full-size Nestle drumstick cone and definitely cuter. Visit us at drumstick.com. Vacations are all about family time, but you don't have to leave home to have fun. Take one weekend a month and devote it to family activities. Pull out the board games and puzzles, serve up some treats, or have a picnic. Even without leaving home, you'll feel like you've really had some time away. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, November 3rd, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.03 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,169 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $329. Antiwar.com reports fighters from the Islamic State have executed another 50 members of the Albu Nimr tribe, a powerful Sunni tribe in the easternmost portion of Iraq's western Anbar province, bringing the overall death toll in a recent purge to at least 322. The Albu Nimr tribe was a powerful force in the Sunni awakening factions during the U.S. occupation and is one of the few Sunni tribes in Anbar to remain loyal to the Iraqi government. The tribe resisted when the 
Islamic State pushed into eastern Anbar, particularly around the city of Hit, though over the past week they lost their remaining territory in a sustaining push. The Islamic State has been keen to stay on good terms with the Sunni tribals in territories they've taken over, but those that have resisted have been met with wholesale massacres as the group aims to intimidate other tribes against trying to resist them. The massacre severely reduces Albu Nimr's remaining power and also hurts their relations with the Iraqi government as they insist their calls for military aid were not answered. Prime Minister Abadi insists airstrikes have been launched over the weekend in response to the killings, but this seems very much after the fact and are limited at any rate. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. The Associated Press reports for 12 days in August, the U.S. government agreed to a police request to restrict more than 37 square miles of airspace surrounding Ferguson, Missouri for safety, but audio recordings show that local authorities privately acknowledged the purpose was to keep away news helicopters during violent street protests. On August 12th, the morning after the Federal Aviation Administration imposed the first flight restriction, FAA air traffic managers struggled to redefine the flight ban to let commercial flight flights operate at nearby Lambert St. Louis International Airport and police helicopters fly through the area but ban others. In a series of recorded telephone conversations obtained by the Associated Press, one FAA manager said about the St. Louis County Police, they finally admitted it really was to keep the media out, but they were a little concerned of, obviously, anything that could be going on. At another point, a manager of the FAA's Kansas City Center said police, quote, did not care if you ran commercial flights through the temporary flight restriction all day long. They didn't want media in there, end quote. FAA procedures for defining a no-fly area area did not have an option that would accommodate that. The conversations contradict claims by the St. Louis County Police Department, which responded to demonstrations following the shooting death of 18-year-old Michael Brown, that the restriction was solely for safety and had nothing to do with preventing the media from witnessing the violence of the police response. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. Reuters reports the head of the federal agency examining last week's fatal crash of a Virgin Galactic passenger spaceship during a test flight in California's Mojave Desert said on Sunday that the vehicle appears to have broken apart in flight. Christopher Hart, acting chairman of the National Transportation Safety Board, told Reuters during an interview, The debris field indicates an in-flight breakup. We'll know for certain when we look at all the sources we have. The NTSB is leading the investigation into Friday's crash of Spaceship 2, which was undergoing its first powered test flight since January when it crashed, spreading debris over a five-mile swath of the Mojave Desert north of Los Angeles. One pilot was killed and the other was badly injured. Preliminary data gathered in the Virgin accident indicates that a structural failure and not an engine explosion led to the crash. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Sony released this week the Nasal HD 340s, a brand new pair of high quality nose buds designed to let users blast different scents into their nostrils throughout the day. The Onion let consumers across the nation sound off about their excitement for the new product. I've always got them in my nose. At work, at the gym, on the bus, wherever. These days, I can't stop smelling tennis ball. Retailing for $49.99, the nose buds accompany the launch of Sony's new online odor store, which sells over 22,000 different smells for download and immediate inhalation. Still, not everyone is quite as enthusiastic about the new product. These things suck. I mean, a lot of times it only works out of the right nostril. The other day I tried smelling picnic table. It smelled more like hardwood floor. And also, to be honest, I have a 
Really hard time breathing with these things on. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Dial in toll free here and bring up anything you'd like. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Join us online at freetalklive.com. All the features are free on the site. Please enjoy them on us. And the us tonight includes me, Ian, Derek J. And Mark. You like Derek J? You want to get more of him? You can do that over at derekj.me. And then there's probably more than you can possibly consume. You are so. Uh, prolific at creating content, Derek J. Not only are you doing audio in the form of several different uh, radio shows, podcasts that you perform on a weekly basis, but you're also doing video updates regularly. I saw you shooting video today at the brand new, and now you've got another responsibility. You're a clerk at a local thrift store, but you were shooting video of the grand opening. Yeah, it's great, and it should be possible to juggle all of these things. Mm-hmm. They're a lot of fun, and I'm passionate about all of them. Uh, and yeah, there's great video that you can find all at DerekJ.me. It's sort of like a window into the world of what's happening here in Keene. Yeah, and uh, DerekJ.me also links you over to Victimless Crime Spree, which was your feature-length documentary film that uh, we made a couple years ago, which is excellent. People can go watch that for free and uh, watch all of your videos for free and listen to the shows. and It's good stuff. So DerekJ.me. Let's go back to your calls and thoughts. In fact, let's go to Skype where we've got... Mike on the line. He's in Ohio. Mike, you're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead. Uh, tomorrow is voting day here in Ohio, mm-hmm. and I don't vote, but um, well, it's just everyone around me is going to be wearing I voted stickers and asking if I voted and encouraging me to vote, and everyone else is going to be all excited, and I'm going to feel a little left out. So I've got an idea for something to do instead of voting, and I'm going to buy a lottery ticket. So, uh, Your chances of uh, to, oh, of it making a difference are about the same. Exactly. Yes. When someone asks me <laughs> if I voted, I'm going to be able to say no. I bought a lottery ticket, and I can give them that explanation that, about it. That's a great idea. Well, if the chances are about the same, at least if you were to be successful with a lottery ticket, you would immediately benefit, as opposed to if you voted for the right person, you wouldn't get any benefit whatsoever for the most part in most places because. You know, you usually would just be voting for the lesser of two evils, which is a good reason to not vote. When when you tell people you don't vote, um, they give you that whole civic uh, responsibility it's thing. It's your I'm duty. Sure. Yeah. What what about your duty, man? You got duties and stuff. All right. Thanks, guys. I just uh, wanted to share that. Can you hear, no, no, wait, can wait. You hear us? Can you hear us? Well, yeah. Okay. What about your duty? Oh, my duty. You got a I civic don't... duty to vote, man. Why didn't you vote? Well, just as you said, there's just as much chance of me, my vote having an influence in that as me winning that lottery. And uh, I mean, I've got other personal reasons. I feel it's a little bit um, demeaning for me to, you know, they call it the the slave suggestion box. Suge- for me, the, sort of. the suggestion box for the slaves, mm. right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Do you want the master who will whip you uh, with a with an actual whip, or the master who will smack you with a pole? Uh, you know, what is your preference? Thank you for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Plus, when you live in a place like Ohio, there's probably no one worth actually voting for. Uh, we were actually having a conversation during the news break about uh, Derek J. You were wondering, you know, is there anybody worth voting for here in the Keene, New Hampshire area? And there actually is. The the former president of the Free State Project, which, of course, is the reason we're all here, the idea of moving liberty-oriented people to the same geographic area and then having them get active to achieve liberty in our lifetime. Uh, Baron Swearingen, who was president for a number of years of the Free State Project, lives in Keene, and he is on the ballot for, I believe, the second time running for state representative. Now, he lost the first time, and Republicans tend to lose in Keene, so I don't expect that he will come out victorious uh, tomorrow. But He will if uh, enough people go and vote for him. But at the very least, he's worth voting for. I could totally understand why somebody who's of a liberty mindset would feel completely burned out on voting as a thing because why bother? In most races, it's just a, it does seem like a total waste of time. But here in New Hampshire, there are actually people who are freedom-oriented, who are running as both Republicans and Democrats, and some of them are going to win tomorrow. In fact, one of them, Amanda Bolden from Shire Sharing, who we had on the show not too long ago, 
uh, which she's a great activist who's doing some wonderful charity work up here in New Hampshire. It's my understanding she has no opposition in her race. So she's, <laughs> I mean, basically, uh, you know, unless there's some sort of magical write-in campaign that manages to uh, exceed her vote, she's going to win. She's going to walk home with uh, with a victory tomorrow night. Which great is awesome. strategy. Yeah, it's awesome, and th- that shows you like. New Hampshire is a ripe place for political action. There are a lot of races. I think Daryl told me that a couple of years ago, and more libertarian types will live in and will win in New Hampshire tomorrow than they will in the rest of the United States combined. Yeah, I think combined. you're absolutely right about that. Um, I'd love to be wrong, but I think you're absolutely right. I've about been that. right every other yeah. election for the last <laughs> six years or so. But I remember Daryl Perry, who's our Friday night co-host here on Free Talk Live. He's like a He's like an election junkie. Like he reads all the news about yeah. third parties and you know, he knows all kinds of facts and factoids about elections and things like that. And he did ran the numbers once and he looked and I think it turned out that it was like twenty twelve or some recent election in New Hampshire that when they were electing the state reps, something like forty five percent of the elections had no opposition. Like there was that much wow. of an opportunity. That anybody could just could have just thrown their hat into those races and at the very least provided some opposition for the incumbent who then just naturally just gets elected again. These races are in New Hampshire? In New Hampshire. Wow. 45% of the 400 uh, house seats. And I could be a little wrong on the percentage, but it was a shockingly high number, like almost one of two of these races, there was no challenger whatsoever to uh, to the incumbent. Wow. In, in those cases, you have a much better chance than uh, when you what you would have with a lottery ticket. You, uh, at the I, very least, at the very least, have, uh, as a candidate, the opportunity to bring the message of freedom into that race where it previously wouldn't have been. And then if you're voting, you know, again, I don't expect the guy to win tomorrow who I'm going to vote for, but at least I don't feel dirty. And you bring freedom of choice into it, too, that the... The people voting, I mean, even if they want the incumbent, do they really want no choice at all? Like, mm. oh, yeah, we like this guy, but, like, why not any competition? It's good to just have another choice in the race, just so, to show that you've got some. What an exciting opportunity for people who have yet to move here for the Free State Project. Like, yeah. All you got to do is be here for two years and you can run for state rep and throw your hat into the ring. Even if you're not going to campaign actively, at the very least, you can throw your hat. It costs $2. It's $2 to run for state rep as a Republican or Democrat here in New Hampshire. So for 2 bucks, you can throw your hat in the ring and the newspaper is going to interview you. They're going to ask you questions. You can talk about freedom in your responses. Maybe you'll get local uh, radio coverage and who knows what else. So for 2 bucks, you know. You can't get there. You can't get advertising that cheap for these ideas. Let's continue here. So if you care about winning for liberty, you should really check out the Free State Project at freestateproject.org. As we go to Chris in Vegas, you're listening online via the TuneIn app. Hello, Chris. Hey, guys. Wow, it's getting really cold here in Vegas. It's so weird. It's like 5 o'clock. And it's just totally dark. It's that time of the year, I guess. Mm. When the politicians change your clock. Right. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I guess where I sit, uh, I'm affiliated with the Democratic Party, but ideologically uh, pretty liberal. But, um, you know, you guys are talking about voter turnout. And uh, I do think that I, I know you guys are uh, big third party guys. You guys are libertarians, um, which I respect. I'm a big supporter, um, especially on the Democratic side. I really like what the Green Party does uh, on a grassroots level um, for people like me that are on the left. And so, uh, you know, I would encourage people at the very least, if they don't want to vote for the lesser of two evils, to, you know, always check that Bob Barr, you know, always check that like Ralph on the ballot because uh, the more votes that third parties get, even though it's kind of like perennial candidates and like throwaway votes, uh, the more votes they can garner, the more federal election dollars that they can get. I don't think I would have voted for Bob Barr. I I don't think I would have brought my – I could have brought myself to vote for Bob Barr, and I didn't. Uh, in fact, it was I think it was New Hampshire where there were two libertarians there was on the ballot. Actually, another libertarian choice on the ballot, so I voted for for him in that case. But you're talking about Bob Barr, who was a former Republican who became a libertarian, managed to pull off the Libertarian Party's nomination back when they were just floundering and pathetic uh, as a political right. party, and uh, ultimately has now left the Libertarian Party, and I, as I understand it, rejoined the Republicans. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't agree. I don't think just because somebody has an L or an or a uh, G. Or whatever next to their name means that they deserve a vote. But I can I can appreciate where you're coming from. Like if you feel like you have to vote for someone, then voting for one of those is better than usually the Republicans or Democrats. But still, 
I really rather would would agree with the person with whom I'm voting for. Thanks, Chris, for your call tonight. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. You can take control here on Free Talk Live. Do you live with stress? If you have nervousness or common everyday anxiety, we're looking for you. Because right now we're sending risk-free supplies of a fast-acting supplement to listeners of this station. You heard right. Every listener who calls right now will learn how to get a risk-free bottle of Stress Block, a naturally derived formula that promotes feelings of calmness, alertness, and focus in just moments. Supplies for this risk-free offer are limited, so don't wait. Stress Block is a fast-acting, non-prescription formula to support relaxation without causing drowsiness. Your nervousness is guaranteed to begin fading like magic in just minutes. This special risk-free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Call us now for this exclusive Stress Block risk-free offer. To get your risk-free supply of Stress Block, call 1-800-481-1288. That's 1-800-481-1288. 1-800-481-1288. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever's on your mind. Just dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE, and you can join us online at freetalklive.com where there's all kinds of of uh, neat features there that those other talk show hosts don't offer. At least uh, they usually put up paywalls, and we don't do that. You can just go for free and grab archives, watch the webcam, and 
get interactive with other listeners. You can actually create the content there on the site. Submit whatever news story or video or something fun, whatever you want to submit, submit it to the site. Other listeners can vote it up if they like it, down if they don't. You can do that too. It's all free over at freetalklive.com. There's no doubt that you need uh, certain government documents, certain legal documents at some point in your life. And a great way to get them is LegalZoom.com. As a matter of fact, Free Talk Live has a discount code that I'm going to tell you about in a second. So whether you need a, a deed transfer or a living trust or a living will or a will or a trademark or a patent or a business annual report, a divorce, immigration, bankruptcy, any of these legal forms that you need, they've got over at LegalZoom.com. They ask you a series of questions. They fill it out for you. Uh, they're not attorneys, but they were started by an attorney. It's a great service. I actually got my will over there. And if you don't have a will, you need one because you're just turning your stuff over to the government and hoping they give them give your stuff to the people you love. Use coupon code FTL at LegalZoom.com to get $10 off your order. It's coupon code FTL. TL, as in Free Talk Live, at LegalZoom.com. All right, so the toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. Uh, let's see. So whether you want to talk about uh, voting, as our last caller did, or you'd like to talk about police violence and escalation rather than de-escalation, all of those things are possible here tonight. But Mark, you had told me off the air uh, that you'd wanted to hear a story about this asexual. Uh, and I've got a, a, a little editorial here called Being Asexual in a Heteronormative World. It's written over at the Huffington Post, and it's by Courtney Aaron Hoffler. And this was, this was an interesting piece to me because, uh, you know, you don't really hear from the asexual community very often. I've never heard any essay or whatever written by an asexual. So this was kind of an, a unique uh, experience reading this. Part of the LGBT community, I was the vice president of my Gay Straight Alliance in high school, and they were a oh, really, really underrepresented group that Asexuals. sort of found some inclusiveness. Yeah, asexuals okay. found some inclusiveness in the LGBT community, and you know all those extra letters get added: LGBTQA, LMNOP. Uh, hold on, if you're not interested in something, why would you have to go pe be part of another group? Like, well, that's the thing that, that makes them feel so alienated, it seems, is because it's like, well, you're not in our group. Well, you're not in our group either. Well, you're not, you know, and they have nowhere to belong and they I don't, don't get talked about. It's, it's as if they don't even exist. Well, first of all, we don't know how many asexuals would join such a group. I don't well, suspect this lady would based on the way she writes in this piece. But yeah, uh, if, if you're well, looking for somebody, it would make sense, though, to, to go and at least hang out with LGBT so you can find some been... kind of commitment. You can find some sort of uh, partner, perhaps, because it's not that, at least in my experience with the, the group, it's not like asexuals are not looking for partners to be with. It's just mm. that they're not interested in, in sex. sex with those partners. So at the very least, if someone in an LGBTQ community would be more accepting, possibly, towards an asexual than maybe Well, they know otherwise. what it's like to be an other. Oh, to be on the outside. Yeah. yeah. So uh, heteronormativity, by definition is the basic is basically the principle she writes that in our culture heterosexuality is the norm and any deviations from it be it homosexuality or asexuality or anything else are in the excluded minority every day people who don't identify as heteronormative are forced to live in a culture that isn't ours but is increasingly forced upon us take it from an asexual now she puts in parentheses apparently the short for that is an ace a c e Living in a very heteronormative and increasingly sex-enthusiastic culture is very isolating if you don't conform to it. From TV shows and movies like graphic sex scenes on HBO and plots that revolve entirely around trying to hook up with members of the opposite sex, to walking down a supermarket aisle and seeing covers of magazines like Cosmo boldly showing headlines like 101 Sex Tips to Please Your Man or Sports Illustrated's Sexiest Swimsuit Models, sex is everywhere. It's not just media culture that's alienating, it's friends and family too. Even queer friends that I have who still aren't in the hetero status quo talk about sex with their partners. Their Facebook feeds constantly show pictures and status updates of weddings, engagements, babies, and dates. When I'm out with friends, there's usually at least one person remarking on the attractiveness of people walking by. Now, isn't this uh, getting popular in Japan? And isn't, uh, what, not having sex, you mean? Yeah, like the whole asexuality. As I, uh, you read some article at one point about that. Should didn't this lady just move to Japan? There were some allegations about that in Japan. I don't know how widespread it is, uh, but it's uh, something that's allegedly happening among some of the young people there. Uh, 
I don't know if it is. I think there'd probably be a big difference between staying away from sex for different reasons versus just not being interested at all. And I think in Japan, it's not so much that someone's just become an asexual because you can have that transition. I don't think that's. I mean, maybe that is possible, but I think it's like you know Seems being gay, more like an inborn you're thing. Born with it, um, or it can be a result of sexual trauma. Yeah, that's certainly true. Uh, when I'm out with friends, she says there's usually at least one person remarking on attractiveness of people. There's something reminding me almost constantly every day that I'm not normal and that I'm not part of this. For people out there who are part of this normativity, it can be hard to see what it is. You see yourself and your happy life and you see a handful of people that you know who aren't straight or sexual or cisgendered, but you don't fully realize the impact of it. To you, they're the exception to a rule that you live by, and to you, it's not a rule, it's normal. It's life, and more than that, it's your life. To compare, think of any major sporting event that you don't partake in, be the Super Bowl, World Series, or March Madness. Think of how much advertising goes into that. Everywhere you look, stores are selling something that has to do with the sport. Jerseys, hats, ridiculous accessories. Even the supermarket is having sales on all of the game day essentials. And you can't turn on the TV for five minutes without having a Doritos ad featuring some beefed up sports star or crazy amounts of advertising for the event itself. All the major retailers and food chains get in on the action and have sports posters hanging from the ceiling endorsing donuts and sneakers. You can't even go out to the mall without tripping over people talking about it when you're not walking into giant cardboard athlete cutouts. There's always at least one betting pool going around if you work in an office, people discussing it at their desks all day, and that one obnoxious coworker who puts bobbleheads and hats at their desk in support of their favorite team. Then there's at least half a dozen people in your neighborhood hosting viewing parties and about a million social media posts of people supporting their favorite team or tearing down their rivals. In headlines, most newspapers and magazines, the athletes involved are suddenly in documentaries and the entire lineup for Jimmy Fallon suddenly looks like every celebrity who isn't an athlete suddenly came down with a crippling case of stage fright. (laughs) By now, I'm sure you have a pretty good picture of this in your mind. And by the time Super Bowl Sunday, World Series or March Madness Championship rolls around, you're probably now remembering how annoyed you are with this particular sport and just how much you really, really want people to stop talking about it before you lock yourself in a dark soundproof box just to get away from it all. That's what it's like to be alienated by culture. But as an asexual, Except all the time, I don't just deal with this once a year on Super Bowl Sunday. I deal with it every single day. She says, I don't, bl- I don't blame people for conforming to the coupling culture. I understand biology and I know that it's heteronormative for a reason. It's natural for the species to want to survive and propagate. At the same time, it's hard for nonconformers to be living in a counterculture. There's no way to escape it or to avoid it. I don't have the option of joining a hippie commune like I could if I was tired of capitalism, greed, and processed foods. She'll come back here with uh, with a little bit more in moments, and you're welcome to share your thoughts on being asexual. Are you? Can you relate to this story here? The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Hi, this is Steve Sanchez, and based on a recent study, it was found that 57 million Americans had legal issues over the last 12 months, but only 60% of those studied sought out the services of a lawyer. Why? In a nutshell, affordability. While my friends at Legal Shield have created a solution that can help you not if, but when you need an attorney. For as little as $17 per month, Legal Shield will provide you unlimited access to qualified attorneys at an accomplished law firm for advice and counsel on legal issues no matter how serious or trivial. For over 40 years and with 1.4 million families across North America, Legal Shield can help you, the loyal GCN listener. Representatives are standing by now to answer your questions, so call them now at 1-855-340-SAVE. That's 1-855-340-7283 or visit them at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Results will vary from case to case. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. 
the people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the Realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com the three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, hey, hey. hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait, no, now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Considering apparently that about one, I don't know, where did I see it was 1%? I thought it was in this article. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe like less than 1% of Americans are asexual. It's probably pretty unlikely that any of them are necessarily listening live or feeling inspired to call in. But if you are... I uh, certainly would love to hear from you and, and hear how you feel about this opinion piece that we're sharing from the Huffington Post, uh, written by an asexual, talking about how difficult her life is uh, as, a, you know, being an asexual. She feels like she's surrounded with this sexuality that's everywhere and she can't get away from it. But it would seem that if you're an asexual, that, like, would it really bother? I mean, does it bother all asexuals that much? I doubt it does, right? Like, like she seems really bothered by this. Like, it seems like an attitude problem to yeah. me. There's plenty of stuff in the world that's not sexual. Absolutely. I mean, for, like for most of k- kids' lives, you know, they get to enjoy tons of great movies. And, uh, I'm not an in- interested in reading Cosmo magazine either. I just ignore the thing. You know. Yeah. What if you were like an extreme extrovert and asexual? Like, that would be a really sort of difficult situation to be in. It's one thing, if you're an introvert, you just just be like, you know, I'm going to work, and then I'm coming home, and I'm going to watch a bunch of movies. Play some video games or something. um, Do whatever it is that I do, and I don't have to worry about you people, or I'll drink myself into oblivion, or whatever it is that you prefer to do when you're not having sex or pursuing people of the opposite gender, whatever it is that you might be doing, that's fine. But if you're an extrovert and you really want to be around people, mm. well, join groups, join a club. be a part of clubs. Yeah, yeah. go to museums. Yeah. There's tons of social groups that do things that, right. are fun that have together. nothing to do with sex. Yeah. <laughs> the chances are good if you're young enough that you're going to be a, a, approached, though, right? Like people sure. of your same, same gender are going to approach you. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you're going to be approached, but that I'm doesn't... approached by girls sometimes, and I have to turn them down. It's, yeah. uh, it happens. Right, I mean, that's that wouldn't bother me either, I wouldn't think. I mean, if somebody were approaching me, that doesn't mean... Again, just because you're asexual doesn't mean you're not interested in contact with other humans, meaning not, not physical, but just knowing them, you know, and 
getting to know them or having a relationship with them. And I think she touches on this here, but uh, it's certainly not uncommon for asexuals to have relationships with whom they have sexual encounters, mm-hmm. but only to, to please their partner because they care about their partner and they understand that their partner does have a sexual drive and that that's okay with them. So, yeah, I agree. It's definitely an asexual with a bad attitude is how I feel about this, but I would love to hear from another asexual uh, if you are out there. The toll-free number is 855-450. Freely continue with the uh, three remaining uh, paragraphs here from the Huffington Post story. We'll post this on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter for you, too. Uh, She goes on, she says, while I fully and completely support LGBTQ and trans folks and their allies who are out there working hard to be recognized and get their civil rights, the battle is a bit more subtle for asexuals or aces. We aren't asking for civil rights, we're just asking for recognition and acceptance amid the sea of heterosexuality. Heteronormativity, she says, is something that is pushed upon everyone by society every single day, and it's something that we're constantly, internally, and externally pushing back against, despite knowing that no matter how hard we try, it's futile. Society won't change, and neither will we. So we can't stop struggling for individuality. We can't stop trying to distance ourselves from this culture. Yeah, that sounds like what her problem is, is that she wants recognition. Um, Make a movie. (laughs) <laughs> so, well, she wrote an article for Huffington Post. All right, that's a start. Yeah. Now, you know, write a, a great uh, tale of an asexual's journey through a difficult life and successes, and uh, it'll be a huge hit. Like, I, I if, there's... if there's people out there who want to be recognized, surely they'll go and fill the seats, right? I think there's a, a, a poem by William Cullen Bryan that's uh, it's called A Man Said to the Universe. A man said to the universe, sir, I exist. The universe responded to him, that does not instill in me a sense of obligation. Who cares, lady? (laughs) So you don't want to have sex with people. Good night. I mean, it's just, so what? I mean, right. I mean, so. uh, It's like me chasing after all the sports fans and saying, hey, I don't like basketball. I I don't like (laughs) basketball. Stop wearing your jerseys. (laughs) It's offensive. Look, if you ask my opinion on what football is, I think it's an analogous to a, a gladiator sport. Yeah. And I think it's pointless to have uh, tackle football that you'd have just as much athleticism and far fewer injuries if we did flag football. But nobody cares what the guy who doesn't watch football very often thinks about professional tackle football. Nobody cared. Like, I just spoke out to 100,000 people or whatever the number listening to this show is, what my thoughts are on football, and all of them went, yawn. Yeah, who cares? Because who cares? Yeah, okay, I can understand the analogy, sports and, and sex. Some people care about one, some people care about something else. But sex kind of determines, like, a person's life. A lot of people, they pair into a marriage, they have kids, It has a huge impact on the way that they live the rest of their lives. I can understand an asexual saying like, hey, I want a little recognition that there's people out there who don't do that sort of thing, who we can't just ignore, pretend they don't exist. Well, that's why I wanted to share this. I do want to, you know, recognize that these people exist. And uh, and I think it's just fascinating to learn about. I, I I happen I find myself wondering, which is why I would love to hear from an asexual. And if it's not tonight, maybe you're an asexual listening to us on the podcast later on. You're not listening live. Yeah. Call in any night of the week because I'm curious. As an asexual, how do you choose a partner? Because in a lot of cases, you know, sexual or choosing a partner is first and foremost based on attraction. It's based on, you know, oh, that person looks good to me. I like I think I could like being with that person. You know, the babies would look good. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, Whether it's overt or, you know, it's something you think about consciously or not. uh, There's an attraction between people. Are asexuals attracted to a certain body type, to a certain look, to a certain hairstyle, you know, like hair color? Mm. Uh, interesting. And and what is that attraction like? Is uh, you know, I mean, obviously you're not thinking about sex when you're attracted to that person, but is there still something about them? You know, well, that's... I think like so, kids I think are I are like void of sexuality, right? If they haven't okay. reached pu- puberty, but they could still identify I an remember, attractive person. Right? I remember being as young as second grade, which would have been about seven years old, and being very attracted to a, a, a pretty girl in the class. Now, I, ne- I don't think I knew what sex was, you know, at that point, um, but I certainly was very interested. I never said a, th- a word to her, but I uh, was certainly interested in her. Yeah, well, I can What's see... What's that? I can see my young son, um, you know, at two 
three years old when, uh, you know, I mean, at this point, he's very uh, interesting to especially ladies. And he would just cozy ride on up to an attractive gal who wanted to read him a book. Mm -hmm. No problem. Like he wasn't, it was a little standoffish to other people, but, Mm. you know, a Pretty girl, a, a pretty girl, att- no problem attention. at all. Huh. I, I I saw an instance where you, you know Michelle Seven here, he she's was pretty. willing. Yep. Yes, yeah, she's a pretty lady. He was willing to dispense kisses to her. He Is that did, unusual? Yeah, okay. it, try to get a kiss out of him. <laughs> you know, I, mean, <laughs> I get hugs from him. You do get hugs yeah. from him, but he doesn't really tish, dish those out. Mm. No problem giving those out to, to attractive ladies. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So what is that? Um, let me give just a little bit more here from her piece complaining uh she goes on <laughs> heteronormativity is something that is pushed upon everyone every single day uh she goes on it's because it's hetero and nor- it's because it's normative we can't stop struggling she says to preserve her identity sometimes she says i wish i could be just normal i hate the struggle i hate being constantly reminded the that I'm struggle different at best she's got a struggle going on or not right or broken at worst I definitely have days and sometimes even phases when I wish I was heterosexual just to fit in, just to stop the fight, just to belong to society and not even need to use any more brain power on it. But I always come back around because I know that for me personally, I'd hate conforming without a second thought even more. Yeah, that's exactly what her problem is. Too much hate? No, her problem is conform. she doesn't want to conform. Mm. Not that she's... (laughs) Um, you know, that she has a problem with uh, heterosexual normativity well, or whatever it is. What should she have she to has, conform? She's feeling loneliness, Mark. That's, I mean, yeah, she's complaining and she's not ma- making great points in my opinion, but she's yeah. what she's really expressing is loneliness. Mm. You know, I don't like to go out into the garden and pick weeds for my wife and lift heavy things for her that she wants to do in her projects, but I do them. So to further... Your point here, Derek J., she's experiencing loneliness. Again, leading me back around to would an asexual find snuggling to be a valuable thing? The closeness, the the intimacy of being close to another human being. You know, they say that people who aren't touched by their parents or hugged become, you know, are likely to become serial killers or whatever. I mean, obviously there's no, nothing sexual there, but there is real value in being close to other human beings. What's the asexual's experience with that? It's Free Talk Live. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules, regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. 
If you're David, a few well-chosen words can help level the playing field with Goliath. I'm Holland Cook from SurvivalSpeech.com. Recently, I saw a Yellow Pages ad for an appliance repair company, and the headline read, Why Wait for Sears? If you're going to the Yellow Pages, the Dead Sea Scrolls of Advertising, you're ready to buy right now. So this is an attention-grabbing message. And how about the plumber whose radio ad says, Call by noon Thursday, and we'll be there Saturday at no extra cost. Smart guy. Most plumbing firms give their crew the weekend off. This one gives them Sunday and Monday off. In the words of a respected advertising executive, cut to the chase, make it quick, and tell me exactly what you can do for me, especially if you're looking for work. For more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments around the world killing innocent people? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin is money that cannot be inflated or controlled by any state. By continuing to use their money, you're perpetuating the killing. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available to you now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at weusecoins.com. It's weusecoins.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control toll-free even in the remaining moments. Uh, of this program, because we're always here for you at uh, the toll-free number 855-450-FREE, seven nights a week. We are live here, and the week tonight includes me, Ian, Derek J., and Mark. So, uh, talking about asexuality and wondering, you know, more about it. Now, Derek, you watched a movie about this called Asexual, with the A in parentheses? Yes, that's correct. It's a documentary from 2011. So, I mean, I've, I've been asking some sort of gen- general questions here, uh, you know, about, you know, what is it like to be an asexual? Are you attracted to other people? Was that any of that sort of, you know, stuff addressed in the in the movie? Do they? Yeah, it was. And there was a range of answers because mm-hmm. there were some people who weren't interested in partnership at all. Uh, there were other people who had partners that they were physically affectionate with in the ways that you described, like cuddling. And... Um, you know, then there were others like one of the main characters of this documentary. He's a man who started a forum because he, he went to the Internet to go find other people like him and realized, hey, there's not really a place for us. Hmm. So he created one. And then this forum really uh, exploded with all of these asexuals who were looking for other people like them right. and uh, found a community. So I think... This guy, he finds other people attractive, other guys, in fact. He's uh, gay asexual, Interesting. if you can uh, put it that way. So he was handing out pamphlets, uh, some literature, feeling very much like the author of this article, saying, I want to be recognized. I want to know. I want other people to know that we exist. And he was actually booed for participating in a gay pride parade at the tail end wow. of it, jumping in and handing out literature saying like, hey, you know, this is an option too. Who would boo somebody? I mean, at a gay pride parade? Yeah, drunk people or something. Oh, Who terrible. knows? You know, they're, they're happy about being gay and they're mad that this guy <laughs> wants to offer some wow. other option about uh, asexuality. And, you well, know. Well, that would be like crazy to have a group of gay people attacking somebody because they're asexual. It's weird because it's become so normal in places like San Francisco like well hey this is you know gay owned territory right so you Yikes. can't you can't be you can't be different it's weird that the oppressed become the oppressors but that was sort of mm. one of the examples he um skates over to a cute guy he's like hey you're cute let's have fun without sex sometime or something like you know mm-hmm. gives him some sort of line 
And the guy's like, huh? He's really confused by this handsome a pamphlet, and now he's more enlightened about asexuality. Yeah. It's going to be hard for this guy to find a partner in no life. No doubt. But he's trying. Toll-free number is 855. Does he want a, a partner that's faithful to him? I imagine so. It seems like he wants a long-term monogamous well, that relationship doesn't that, just, that doesn't involve sex. Long-term um, um, doesn't mean, and it's not monogamous. Uh, you know, it's it's non-gamous. Um, oh, I see what you're saying. Like maybe he would be interested in having a boyfriend who had sex with other people. Yeah, somebody you know. I don't know. That would be something for him to explain. Yeah, Isn't that what the polygamous people do? The polyamorous people do? They live with some their primary or whatever, and then they go out and hump other people. Hmm. Well, I don't think it's necessarily just about humping other people. It's about, uh, as I understand it, from having talked with uh, you know polyamorous folks and uh, and having experienced some of it to some extent uh, in my life, the uh, that it, that it's about sort of having relationships with others who fulfill different interests. I guess you know I have relationships with others that don't fill um, that yeah. fill different interests. I call them friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this is friends with more benefits. There you go. I guess you could say. Indeed. So I think I just Hence find this fascinating. The, uh, the term I use. Let's go to Helen. She's in Montana. You are on Free Talk Live, calling us from Butte. Hey, Helen. Hi. Hey, you're on the air. Go ahead. Oh, well, I just wanted to comment because I think the woman who, the asexual woman, just needs to wait a little while because uh, there are lots of women like myself uh, who were widowed at a young age and who at that point became asexual. We were never asexual prior to that. And... Uh, also, a lot of my friends who are senior citizens who have lost their husbands are the same way. And it, it's, it's like the difference between having to have a man because it's expected and being independent and in charge of our lives. So let me see if I'm – maybe I'm misunderstanding what you're saying. You think she can just – get out of asexuality by waiting it out? No. Just forget about it. Ignore it. Go around it. It doesn't matter. Well, I agree with you. I mean, but it's easy for us to say that because, well, we're not asexual and she's having an experience that is difficult. I mean, for from her perspective, Helen she's does saying, sort of understand that. She's saying that she can't ignore it, that it's everywhere and it's prolific. Well, but oh, but I disagree. She's paying attention to things that don't matter. That make okay. her feel that way. I'm with you there. She should stop paying attention to those things. But you know. yes, you know the and possibility I don't know exists. How old she is? She's probably a lot younger than I am. I get that but, same impression. But as she ages, she'll realize how silly her complaints are. Fair That's enough, Helen. Point. Thanks for your uh, perspective. I certainly appreciate that. Yeah, I don't think all asexuals are as jaded. I, I think jaded seems like a good word uh, for the lady writing this particular story. And, uh, and yeah, as you pointed out, Derek J., there are people with different levels of interest in sexual activity, even as asexuals. And, you know, what's the, what, what about snuggling? You know, like, can you, can you enjoy physical intimacy with another human? And maybe there are some asexuals who would like to snuggle, but others who would just be repulsed by it. You know, I don't know what that's like. Well, speaking of this author's sense of loneliness or not belonging, I agree with Helen's assessment that she needs an attitude adjustment. I'm reminded of a quote. I can't remember who said it first, but the quote is, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And I mm. think that's, that's true. This yeah. woman is seeing it everywhere. It's like, during the Super Bowl, there's Doritos ads everywhere. Well, sexuality isn't everywhere. If you're if you're looking out into the world for something else, you know, you, there's a whole world out Absolutely. there. So go choose what you want. Right. The stuff that you focus on becomes more primary yeah. in your life. You know, it's like when you uh, get a new car and you then start seeing that car everywhere, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. So you focus on the things that uh, that are valuable to you and that you appreciate, and you'll see more of that. That doesn't mean you won't see the Cosmo every now and then when you walk through the, the checkout line, but 
why let it get to you? There's a lot of stuff out there in the world that, that we don't like. I mean, our lives, to some extent, are the process of choosing between what we like and what we don't. And choosing to focus on the things that we like is, to me, a much better mental process than focusing on the things that I don't. I could spend a lot of time and, uh, and mental effort focusing on all the things in the world that I don't like, but that would really make me into a sick person, and it wouldn't be a good thing at all. Your uh, toll-free number here is 855-453. There's actually another story. I went to to click to learn more about this author, Courtney Aaron Hoffler. And she is, again, it's a blog over at the Huffington Post, but it was originally posted from a site called LiterallyDarling.com. She's one of the bloggers there. And I went I looked at all of her blog posts. And there's another one where she says, I don't want a long-term relationship, and I'm okay with that. So give a little bit more in, uh, insight into her. But let's go to your calls and thoughts here in a moment. Uh, we go to James in Arizona via Skype. James, you're on Free Talk Live. Yeah, Derek J., I, I had a lucid dream that one of these days I'll actually get to talk to you about. You call me crazy on a Free Talk Live and to challenge Mark to come up with why he hates me so much. Well, you've got, a ta- you've got enough time to talk to Derek, twist, but uh, you don't have enough time to talk things, to both of them. Twisted things I have to say that are dynamite. Uh, minister, one of those days. Your dream has come to... true. Here you are. You're on but with Derek J. Like to, speaking of cop block Derek J, you once said on your show that that show that Keen is a the Keen cops are a gang of murderous. They're they're a murderous gang, and I'm like, really, is that not a vicious stereotype? So I'm thinking the reason why you go out and you film cops is not because you want to save anybody and create a peaceful world. It's because you suffer from a pathology in that dope den that you live in with <laughs> anti-statists that are a bunch of potheads. Thanks for the call, okay. James. Appreciate That's it. That's very interesting. And he makes, I hesitate to say a good point because I can overstate things. Doing yeah. radio shows, calling cops a gang of murderous thugs. I've said those things. Mark, he pointed out that I was out of line calling all cops yeah, it's true. Uh, a it, it, gang it's, of wolves or whatever I said. His critique was correct. I mean, yeah. it's certainly true that not all of the Keene police are murderous thugs, although there has been uh, at least a couple of shootings uh, involving the Keene police, some of the officers, but not all of them. Yeah, I, in my experience, the Keene police have been very well behaved. I don't remember making the comment that he's talking about, but I think uh, Taking it's, great, it, yeah. it's well, great that I could live in a community where the police know my name, are friendly, absolutely. and uh, that's where I want to be. It has been my experience that James will take some of the words that you say and hear them the way that is most convenient for him <laughs> at the time. I'm not saying every time, uh, and I don't know whether he does it on purpose, but I've had that experience. We're out of time for tonight. I'll post the uh, link to the asexual story on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. And if you are an asexual, call us one of these nights and uh, talk about it. I think it's uh, it's interesting. Freetalklive.com. Have Free Talk Live. There's only one place you could have sex without everybody else knowing about it. <laughs> That's in the bathroom. It Unless was... you want to go back into the crew quarters, which might give you bonus points. The Mile High Club awards you, I suppose, based on the amount of times that you've entered into the club. Not only do you want to be in the club, you want to be the top dog. Yeah, right? you got to be sure. a premier yeah. member. So I would think there'd have to be points for location on the plane who you encountered with. Were you sure. there with your girlfriend? Did you take her into the bathroom? Oh. Did you manage to get a stewardess into the bathroom with you? Did you manage trick. to yeah. get uh, the girl that you just happened to be sitting next to on the plane? I mean, so all of these things could Yeesh. be worth... <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> to be a part of the Mile High Club, what's the criteria? You have copulate to... Copulate in the air. Yeah. What defines copulation? Who has to have an orgasm? Does there have to be an orgasm? Or do you or... just have to stick it in and pull it out? Is it right. just penetration? Bam, bam. We're yeah. out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Mile yeah. High Club, get We're my in. card. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit LibertyOnTheRocks.org today to get started.
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan, with your Liberty Beat for Monday, November 3rd, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,168, silver $15.93, and Bitcoin is trading around $329.26. Today's metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from SovereignMiners.com. Interested in mining Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies? Well, Sovereign Miners has you covered. All purchases come with a free script ISIC miner. Visit SovereignMiners.com to buy your miner today. In the news, leaked phone conversations from the Federal Aviation Administration show that the true purpose for a no-fly zone in Ferguson, Missouri in August was to keep the media out, not for safety, as had been claimed. The Associated Press reports that during one of the phone calls, a manager at the FAA's Kansas City Center said the police did not care if you ran commercial traffic, but they didn't want media in there. Air managers changed policy to allow for some air traffic while grounding news helicopters during the 12-day no-fly zone. The recordings contradict claims made by the St. Louis County Police Department, which stated that restrictions were not about the media, but about safety. Senator Ron Wyden has criticized the CIA for their efforts to redact significant portions of a delayed Senate report on CIA torture. Senator Wyden attacked the agency's demand that all names, including pseudonyms, be redacted from the report. The Senate Intelligence Committee has agreed to strike the real names from the report, but is insisting on using pseudonyms as an alternative. The Los Angeles City Council recently instructed the Los Angeles Police Department, the Police Commission, and the City Attorney's Office to create rules for the use of unmanned aerial vehicles or drones in Los Angeles. Earlier this year, the LAPD received two drones, which were purchased using federal grant funds. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Jessica Armand would like to thank Liberty Beat listeners for all of their support. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. Did you know you can support the Liberty Beat when shopping on Amazon.com? Well, you can. Just log into your account after clicking our Amazon affiliate link at LibertyBeat.com slash Amazon. That's right. Now you can help the Liberty Beat continue to deliver hard-hitting Liberty news and activist updates just by doing your Amazon shopping after following our link at TheLibertyBeat.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, November 3rd, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. Researchers with architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth are planning on suing the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the National Institute of Standards and Technology to force the release of nearly 500,000 records related to the attacks of September 11, 2001. The records contain evidence gathered by the agencies and other contractors in the days and weeks following the event. Architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth say the NIST and FEMA have resisted Freedom of Information Act requests and in some cases refused their obligations to respond. The researchers state that some of the records pertain to the controversial collapse of World Trade Center Building 7, which fell in the evening despite not being hit by a plane. Huntsville, Alabama city officials paid $157,000 to a former FBI agent last year to oversee security improvements, which included monitoring the social media activity of students. AL.com reports that 14 students, 12 of which were African American, were expelled due to the spying. Madison County Commissioner Bob Harrison said the results indicate that the online snooping targeted black children. School board member Lori McCauley, who is African American, says that's not true. 
adding that the expulsions were due to the most serious offenses, such as weapons, drugs, and sex. The so-called SAFE program operates on tips from teachers or students, while security personnel look for images of guns or gang signs on social media sites, such as Facebook. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from the Conscious Resistance Network. Videos, news reports, and articles from a spiritual anarchist perspective. Experience the Conscious Resistance at theconsciousresistance.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, November 3rd, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. It was on this day in 1982 that the first roller skating while carrying a boombox member of Congress was elected when James Sugar Boots Franklin narrowly won New York's 8th congressional seat. Franklin's victory was a watershed moment at the time, signaling that America's burgeoning population of boombox carrying roller skaters had finally gained mainstream acceptance. We proved Congress isn't just for suits and crew cuts. Say hello to the slickest legislator on eight wheels, James Sugar Boots Franklin. Franklin was an unlikely pioneer, a street smart skater who admitted to being more concerned with impressing honeys with his silky smooth moves than with politics. Franklin began organizing boombox carrying roller skaters, advocating for basic rights like roller skate accessible 